All right, guys. Yes. Welcome back. Yes. Market Mondays. Yes, yes. Greatest show on earth. For sure. Un undisputed champions That's a fact. of the United States of America. We are back. Another chance. And we got the Pelosi plays from Rashad. Come on, Rashad. That's, that that will be appearing in the show later. Yeah, <laughs> NVIDIA call. I'll give you the info <laughs> shortly. Um, but yeah, first and foremost, thank you guys. Happy for, Monday. For, for rocking with us. Yes. We back for another week. Um, Bitcoin all time high. Uh pullback in NVIDIA. Yeah. Uh, a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. my trip to the White much. House. Yes, it's a lot going on. State yeah. of the Union. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on out here. Um, but first and foremost, um, just wanted to shout out everybody that made Troy's option masterclass last week. Love. He's going to be doing that once a month. So if you're part of EY University, Heard it was but fire. This Thursday, if you're part of EY University, you need to is an orientation. So you definitely need to join that to be um, you know, informed on what's going on in the app and to really be able yeah. to navigate the community. So I highly recommend for, for everybody that is already a member, anybody that, that recently joined, eight o'clock Thursday will be on, Magna will be leading it. So if you're on EYL University, join that, yes. please. It's not like, we don't want, it's not a get rich quick thing where you just join one time and see one class. It's, it's a real community that we built over the course of four years. So, you know, it's something that we, we put a lot of time into. So join the orientation. We'll be going every over everything like eight o'clock on Thursday. Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody sure. attended. Like you said, got in the bag a little bit, man. Mike said, yo, you don't, don't give them, don't give them everything away, man. But I felt like we it's been so long since we had a, a ability to sit down and talk uh, and teach, man. And that's a beautiful thing. A lot of people took some lessons. We ran the AI play. Uh, we did it live. So it was Ooh. dope. Man. It was dope to be back in the classroom again. It's been like two years since I sat down and taught. So it was fun, man. So make sure y'all tune into orientation. It's going to be a good one. And we got some, we got some dope things building in EYLU. So shout to everybody that joined. Uh, we're back home, y'all. And Dr. Trisha Bailey tomorrow episode at one o'clock for Ernie Leisure. And shout out to 19 Keys for he had a dope episode out right now. Amazing. Conversations. Yes. It's four hours long. I spoke to him last night. Four hours long. It's definitely a, a marathon. You might have to break it up into different segments if you're watching it, but extremely um insightful conversation. Definitely mm -hmm. worth worth a watch for yeah, sure. The clips alone, uh I like engaging like you can't it, it like ties you in like you have to go watch the episode shout out yeah. to these and shout out to uh i know we didn't say it but women's uh it's national women's month and yeah, we have an we, we, women's we haven't all went so if, if you haven't noticed and shout out to everybody that uh participated and celebrated all our women that are part of eylu and all our women yes. that are earners obviously the women in our lives shout out to you it was international women's uh day last week so shout out to all of our women Love is love. I know. We, I think somebody said, y'all don't acknowledge it. Well, we're putting out nothing but women. Happy International Women's Month. We have an all women for Earn Your Leisure this, this month as far as guests. So, um, oh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole month. Is, the whole month. It's just going to be all women guests. So, uh, yeah, celebrate that. And um, also have a blessed Ramadan to anybody that's yes. observing. Yes, it. yes, yes. yes. Start tonight or yesterday. Have a, you know, different people start different days. But let's... um have some peace and instability during this month that's what's needed sure. it's definitely definitely needed yes for sure for sure um yeah. Ian. <clears throat> oh and shout out to everybody that's watching blackout um shout out to spiritual word that um yeah shout you, out to y'all thank you for the repost blackout is meant to be a different um type of show so people some people might not fully understand the content behind blackout but it's a very um important conversations especially like the business conversations they're raw um like you know as far as like being paid on time these are things that it might not be the most um highly eloquent as far as but it's important it's another important way to kind of it's get out there when you talk about divorces when you talk about prenups when you talk about a variety of different things so blackout allows us to have that um variety uh mm -hmm. as far as the content is concerned and um is definitely catching a lot of traction out there. So check out Blackout every Wednesday at 10 o'clock in, in the replays. And um, tell us what you want to hear on Blackout. We'll be doing call-up sessions soon. We'll have I can't wait. Guests. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, Blackout. Blackout, yeah. that's the wave right now. Blackout, tune in. But you could also listen to, I think a lot of people forget that. It also is a podcast in itself. So if you yes. can watch the visuals, go listen to it on all audio platforms. Go run it up. It's, it's the hottest thing out there. 
uh, I keep getting calls about it. Like, yo, they have a conversation that oh, we really want to have, but we can't have. So it's much yep. appreciated, man. So shout out, shout out to and, Black. And, and I'll say these are the conversations you got to have after you've achieved success. Like climbing up the mountain is one thing. Getting back down is another. Uh, I've said it before. Every angle, as you get successful, people are going to find ways to try and rob you or manipulate or finesse. So these are some honest conversations that need to need to be had. So I've been having a blast on the show and we got the Internet in a frenzy and I love it. So <laughs> tune in every Wednesday. I appreciate you. Sure. Yeah. Ian, yeah. Floor, floor is yours for any announcements. Uh, stock club call would be this Wednesday. If I made you money, please put yes in chat. K kudos to those of you who got it on Bitcoin at 20,000 and 28,000 when I called it. Um, and then go to joinredpanda.com. I will be doing a stock club sale for those of you who missed out on some of these gains. So, um, and then maybe on Market Mondays, we'll do a, a little special, give you, you know, like invest fest kind of deal. Maybe we need to bring that back, Shoddy. Mm -hmm. Troy, what you think? <laughs> so, maybe, maybe it's that time, you know? So, coming up, stock club call on, when on Wednesday, Thursday, go to EYLU for the orientation. Maybe next options class, I can pop in with Pelosi and Shoddy. Perhaps that'll be dope. Perhaps, dope. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? mighty, mighty E Y L. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bring the blue jacket back out. Hey, hey, man, I, I, I see the, the red panda jersey too. Like, we, we got to acknowledge that. That's, that's like the, the, the islanders colors, right? Yeah, trying to do what I can, you know, a little, little New York yeah. legend. Okay, yeah, honorary New York legend. So, there you go. Yeah. There you have it. It's gonna be good. I got an announcement about Invest Fest too, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Oh yeah. my God! I'm That's excited. The deal. They came here for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So okay, I gotta put my bid in. I want to come in on an elephant or zip line in like Shawn Michaels. <laughs> can we right can now? We or, or or both uh, on a zip liner on an elephant? Yeah. Did we ever That'd talk about your? <laughs> did we ever talk about your interest last year of the request that you had? No, we didn't. <laughs> you can tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but it just get better and better. No, nah, no, nah, I, I love it. I love it. Ian is uh, definitely inspired by a certain era that we grew up in, and it was about Absolutely. being a showman. It was about theatrics. It was about putting on a show and being the center of of attraction. Uh, so I I think it's a good branding lesson too. Yeah, we can't take for like I never even take for granted being there. So like the information has to be great. Like I wanted to shout to Carolyn, but I wanted to Q&A mode, trying to get some information out of Kathy. But the 45 minutes or hour that I have, if it's not, yo, Ian killed it, it may be my last time. In athletics, I think in business, people take relationships for granted. And then when the well runs dry, then you get upset. So it's a great lesson, I think, when it's time to perform and show up and show out, to put on a hell of a show and give great information. The zip line play. That's a fact. That's a <laughs> yeah. fact. Disclaimer. Ah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You know how this works. Do your research. And if you were with us, you saw that there's a lot of research that goes into every decision <laughs> that we make. <laughs> so our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good brothers at Earn Your Leisure and the good brother, Ian Dunlap, the master investor himself. Continue to do the research. Yes. Use the research wisely. Share the research. Give credit where you found it uh, and execute with it. That's the most important thing. Execute. Absolutely. Yeah, execute. So, all right. Let's start the show off with NVIDIA. Um, mm -hmm. Mighty, mighty. It's been a talk of the town. Baby. Went down Friday. Yep. Went down today um so <clears throat> we're seeing a pullback happen which isn't isn't surprising because of the, the run that it's had so mm -hmm. the question the question would be how far will it pull back um is this something that could potentially be long term is this a buy-in option or will this pop back soon um is it is it overpriced is it overvalued Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's start. Let's start there. Um, lesson number one: You never want to buy when it's at an all-time high. Uh, I talked about this on Stock Club Call this past Saturday, but when it got to that high, it had a hell of a drop on Friday. When you're hearing a stock go up this much, like if we look beginning of the year it was four ninety two, it hit a high of nine seventy four. You got to start to steer clear. Number two: Is it over? No. But if you think a stock can just continue to rise 
five or 10 percent a day that's really illogical for the stock market it may be commonplace in crypto but in stocks no um it could pull back to maybe 744 not a bad entry if i can get in there um will a split come yes eventually i like it better if it gets down to 625 i don't know if it will but i like the stock long term but these are investing principles 101 once the stock gets to an all-time high please refrain from buying if you do that you'll be okay i know some of you feel like you missed out but it sucks to be in a stock at 950 and then you get hit for 85 bucks in a loss so i think it's one of those lessons regardless of what the asset class is if you're buying at a high you're asking to get your portfolio killed yeah this this is a classic uh case of a stock that's just a little bit exhausted when, you, when you're talking about that run from from 400 to 974 within yeah two months i mean at some point it has to pull back and that's a good thing right like you you look at especially in, in the options market when you look at the amount of volume and the percentage of what nvidia is taking inside of that market it, mm -hmm. it almost doesn't even make sense so a pullback is fine um yeah and, and it's actually needed right so what people are looking to buy in, i think you gave some great numbers if it gets under 800 i, I like to add more to the position but this is it, it's a marathon right you don't want to be running at a spinner's pace during this marathon and so is it going anywhere no in fact price targets were actually raised i just saw counterfeits gerald raise their price target to 1200 um so it's not going anywhere uh will competition be coming yeah absolutely is it within the next six to eight months probably not steep competition i don't think so it's it's brewing it's brewing it, it won't be here in, in the next i wouldn't in the next six to twelve but it is brewing uh we saw kathy wood said that she sold some of her shares and so you start seeing things like that and it makes sense right people will take profits and and, and we brought up the options part because again we understand that contracts expire every friday and we understand quadruple uh witching witching um, yeah yeah and so that's happening around this time too and so you got to take all these things into account when you start looking at um a stock like nvidia that has run up a lot and people have taken profits and rightfully so you should be taking profits um Absolutely. because this run is unprecedented and i've never seen anything like it uh so we got to be diligent with how we're managing this yeah i said yeah that no shawty go ahead but no go ahead i said two weeks ago like when things start to not make sense then they don't it's it's not going to make sense for too much longer and I, I made a comparison when um ripple when ripple when the ceo ripple became the tenth richest person in the world years ago when <laughs> Ripple was at three yeah. three dollars and twenty three cents, and I, I said the same thing with um with Nvidia. I, Nvidia is not is not as is not more important than than Google. It's not more important than than Apple. It's an important company, um, but I mean, just mm. it's 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 a, it's a thing called common sense in life. I think Nvidia may be more important than Google, but yeah, Apple. I don't know. I might argue that. I might argue that it is as a, if not more important as important shoddy shoddy make the face again <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know that, that, that's not clear out face but get out the way it, it made sense the xrp definitely makes sense i the nvidia case it might be as important if not more but keep going yeah well, but the I, rate of growth was unsustainable yeah, that's true like like i said it's, it's, a, it's a thing called common sense like right. when you see something that's just keep what goes up must come down mm -hmm. so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be fine long term it's, it's gonna it's gonna continue to go up long term but um you know obviously when you see 25 percent of stock options in nvidia um Crazy. and you see it go up you know 300 percent in a year and it become the third most valuable company on the stock market on pace to be the second most valuable company in the stock market yeah passing up you know every company in the world pretty yeah. much the highest um, call volume in their history at like crazy 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 yeah. I mean, there's more companies that made chips outside of NVIDIA. If they were the only company in the world that, that made computer chips, then okay. I would say that they're, they're, they're a more important company than Apple or Amazon or Google or Microsoft. But I mean, let's, let's put things in perspective. They're not the only company in the world that makes computer chips. Um, they might be the biggest company, but yeah. they're not the only one of the company, best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah i just think that you know it's important to kind of always keep things in perspective nvidia will be fine but um i mean it's bound to happen when you when you yeah. just keep going up like this you know the, the, the law of price averages come into play like i mean if you triple inside of a year your multi 
billion tr- or multi-trillion dollar company, you, it's impossible to go up six, seven X in a year without having a precipitous crash. Now, if their net margin was higher and it's already still at 49%, Crazy. If their net margin was like 82%, I would be like, okay, they have more room to continue to push towards 1500. But like, if you're just do, doing a mathematical calculation, they are technically at the price where they should start to fall back. And if you, even if you look on a monthly basis, they technically should be at 774. They're at 858 right now. Like, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, Frito Lays, Kellogg. You have to obey these law of averages in terms of how much the market will move up. So what's your price target for NVIDIA for the next year or two years? Um, I'm still having at uh, 1030 and 70 cent. That's why I think we'll get to this year, probably around October. I think the summer will be rough. Biden going to do his Biden dance to do whatever he can to keep you know his chances in of being in. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. seeing Kamala going on a campaign trail. Shout out to you, Queen. But yeah, thousand thirty and seventy cents is where I have it going um, this year. I definitely see it crossing the thousand mark, maybe up to eleven hundred. Um, yeah. For the, some of the reasons that you talked about, but even more importantly, uh, the Fed, the Fed chair, he hinted, right? Like we're starting to, he's starting to make more hints that there will be a, a lowering of the rate. Uh, maybe it's a quarter percent. Maybe it's you know a half a percent. We'll see that might start in march uh and we know what happens in the you know the summer months over the past couple of years and we've seen what happened in the fourth quarter especially when, when we're talking yeah. about uh semis and definitely technology um so all signs are pointing to appreciation um over the, the, the course of 2024 um so there's more growth right this this pullback is great uh but get your price targets now and figure out where you want to enter the position that's one of those golden rules yeah. right never enter the position before you know when you're going to exit so definitely i, I would be Putting my my if you're doing the Fibonacci lines, uh, I would definitely be marking them off now. Absolutely, drawdown uh, all time. September 22 was negative 59 percent from the high. Uh, January 2019 was 52 percent from the high. Back in 2010, negative 79 percent from the high. So I'm not saying that they're going to drop 50 percent or 70 percent, but I would like you said if you draw out your fibs historically knowing how low a stock is going will be in your favor if we do have a dramatic crash but biden made that call huh, to the fed chair hey bro i get hey. them rates cut he said i see it coming yeah and i think they, they're in a, a, a position right especially when we talk about the tension between um them and china with not being able to sell uh, certain chips to them the h the h100 h200 uh, and yeah. knowing that NVIDIA, uh, AMD is building a chip that is going to be more cost effective, it gives them opportunity to now look at the landscape and see what competitors are doing and how do they combat it. Because, yes, yeah. they don't make the, the most chips, right? TSM does that. But they do lead in GPUs as ta- in terms of functionality, efficiency, and high power. But I just got a, 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 some information about another type of chip that might be even more functional for the everyday business, and those are LPUs. And so I, I'm gonna give y'all the knowledge on that. Uh, probably I'm gonna go into that a little bit more. Probably a little bit next week. So and, and to be completely fair, um, AMD and TSM fell as well. So this the entire sector and Nasdaq got affected by it. it. Wasn't just them that fell. Yeah, yeah, ASML, all of them. Yeah. So any any price under 800 is a good buying price for Nvidia. No, I wouldn't say any per se, but I like it at. Like if I wanted like a quick entry, maybe seven eighty four, and then if it fell to, if it ever got to six thirty, I would be elated. I would be elated. We got to take this. It went from four ninety two, and had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten weeks of upward growth, whatever yeah. going up two to five percent or t- two to ten percent a week. Um, so these are just laws of of averages. You got to wait for it to pull back. If you get into eight hundred. If you do a two year call, you, you'll be fine. If you hold a stock for five years, you'll be fine. But if you are, if you can't afford to lose that much, I will let, wait for the prices that I gave. And then once they get above a thousand, I think they'll split anyway. That's I was just going to ask you that. What, at what number do you think a split will, will take place? You think it, it, well, when, it, when, when they cross and close above a thousand, mm-hmm. th- they have to because now it's too pricey. Because this is the most important stock mm-hmm. in the United States of America right now. Um, Five to one, and, six to one. Hopefully that that would be ideal, and even Buffett. I don't know if you know if you guys read, but I went through the uh, Warren Buffett's uh, annual letter. He only mentioned Apple one time. 
So for all of you kept saying, Apple's fine, the ecosystem, you have to put out the fire when it's a small grease fire, not when your whole kitchen's in shambles. Like when me and Shadi both was like, yo, Apple hasn't delivered how they should. Buffett barely, that's like when you like got an ex and you don't mention them. No, you don't even say my ex, but that's, that's kind of his that. wife mouth of footnotes. Like in all fairness, better. right? He did. He mentioned it once, but what's his largest holding? Yes, but will it change? No, that's that's what that would be the indicator, right? Like if we start to see that type of sell off, if we start seeing allocations move differently with Berkshire Hathaway, okay, now if it now, drops five or ten percent, yeah, because Charlie was really the driving force, like, and he should have did it maybe seven years earlier. But I put on Twitter this weekend, like they missed the acquisition of Tesla. But the war between him and Elon was going on, so he wasn't going to buy it. Miss AMD, I think they should have probably got DJI. They haven't announced a, a crypto or, or wallet project. Haven't pushed aggressively enough into healthcare. Like sometimes you can rest on your laurels, and I think they're still a great company. But the next big thing, it's like the NBA. iPhone is LeBron, but is driving the revenue. But you need a replacement. No one even wants the iPhone anymore. Wimby's close, but not there. Like they have to find something fast before somebody else takes the guard. So, yeah, let me make this announcement about Invest Fest. Yes, um, please. Invest Fest. Yeah, the mighty mighty is something that traditionally for the last three years has been in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but this year we're open to moving the situation. So what we're gonna do is uh um, free agents. We, we 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 got some options. I appreciate what you have play. <laughs> <laughs> so you lose appreciate it. us the appreciation play. So <laughs> um so what what we're gonna do is um we wanna we wanna have some fun with this. So we're gonna do a business grant. We're giving away five thousand dollars to a small business. So in order to win, make an Instagram post, make an Instagram video saying why invest fest should be in your city and describe your business. Tag Earn Your Leisure, Tag Invest Festival, and you can win five thousand dollars if we pick your city, um, and we pick you as the winner. So we want to open it up. That's I fine. feel like I love Atlanta. Atlanta is a, 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 a the black mecca, indeed. But we want to hear the voices of the people, and um, you know, we we value we value people's opinions. So mm -hmm. felt like this would be a cool thing to do to kind of get people, you know, a chance to really you know share their thoughts on, on where it should go and also highlight their business and we're going to give you a free vendor booth as well so we give you five thousand dollars for your business mm -hmm. and, a, and a free vendor booth at invest fest um if you make an instagram video tag invest festival tag earn your leisure and um say why it should be in your city and um also you know about your business so we're looking forward to that this we're going to do a few things this year for invest that's fest beautiful a little, a little differently mm. and um I think that's a good way to start, right? Before we name the celebrity, before we name the headliner, before we name anything, we want to start yeah. giving. And um, I'm interested to see what cities would be represented. What, what what city do you think it should be in hmm. here? It, it, who is that on the is, is that Houston on the line? Face time. Face time. Shout out to Houston. But, but I think Bun and them are in another room rehearsing right now. Hey. Hmm. May not be a bad look. <laughs> Hmm. The rodeo, hey. the rodeo play, Ro the play. Uh, New, New York, do I, hate, do I hate New York on the line? The back home boys. New York would be a vibe, yo. Mm. That's a gotta open up La Marina again. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate City is that you? Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> let's, see what, let's see what it. Let's see, let's see what it's hitting for, man. So yeah, I'm so, interested. All right, so that's I'll the match that grant too, huh? I'll match the grant too. Oh yeah, that's Let's only right. It. We family, only the family. Shout out Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm only the five too. I, I'm, a, I'm on Vine mode. All right, there you go. There you have yeah. it. So ten thousand, ten thousand, five thousand yep. from the EYL side, five thousand from the Red Panda side. Um, yes. so ten thousand dollars to a, a a small business owner and a free booth at Invest Fest. 10,000 is, is can go a long way if you're intelligent Absolutely. as far well as your marketing plan and, yeah. and how you want to deploy the capital. Um so ah this this is even better. Uh we going to season of giving. Um okay. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Let's talk about United Healthcare. We talk about mm -hmm. Eli Lilly. Mm -hmm. A lot. Um 
but United Healthcare is another one of these com- companies that, um, you know, we talk about healthcare industry and I'll talk about my trip to White House because I actually met with shout out to um, Congresswoman um, Underwood, but she's actually on the appropriation committee, which um, they actually deploy capital. I think two point two trillion dollars and um, healthcare is one of the areas that they actually deploy the capital to. So that's a different conversation, but it's all tied in. Uh, all right. So what's your thoughts on United Healthcare? Um, for the long term, I like the stock. They are definitely are having some issues. I think in terms of security, they've had a hell of a run from 2013, 2013, they were 58 bucks. They're currently at 489. Um, maybe we can talk about it next week and maybe a little bit on blackout, but I think the United States of America, one of the biggest threats that is facing our country is that the cybersecurity is not up to par or companies are waiting too long before they look to fix it. They had a hell of a drop on the 27th um, to the 28th, which was a, I think, 50 bucks, excuse me, 15 buck drop. Um, so long term, I do like it, but I think this is a signaling that the market is getting ready to pull back. I do like it at maybe 447 or if it gets to 464 long term, but I think there's some issues that need to be fixed. I think they're a lot more stable than people believe because they are in that healthcare space. But there are a lot of improvements that I think that needs to be made on the technology side, the cybersecurity side, and the innovation side if they want to like reign supreme. Where, where where would you put them? Right, if we're talking about Lilly, we always talk about uh, if we talk about Merck, we talk about Novo, Th- Novo. We talk about Thermal Fisher in the past. Where would you put them in, inside of that? If they're the big three, they're definitely Chris Bosch. Shout out to Bosch. Shout out to Adrian. Bosch. Shout out to Bosch. Yeah. Okay, well, that's Hall yeah. of Fame status. Yeah. But very, very good company. Definitely have some weaknesses that they need to fix. Um, if I look at the business, gross margin, 24%, net margin, 6%, not favorable. Mm. Everyone put in chat, net margin matters a hell of a lot. Um, Atlanta, if you lose InvestFest, net margin <laughs> matters a lot. <laughs> Quick gouging. Uh, but 440,000 employees. Great business. I think they can probably price wise get to six twenty one and maybe two or three years. Um, but I think across the board, what we're seeing in NVIDIA, AMD, TSM, ASML, America needs to get out of the web 2.0 era and we need to go to an automation and super innovative version of all businesses in the country to bring up the GDP while every 110 days we owe another trillion dollars. So we need companies to, to make more money. But we need to innovate a lot faster and have better margins. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. uh, fitting. Like, so I'm looking inside of XLV, and so that's Spider's uh, uh, health sector uh, ETF, and they they have the number two allocation. So number one is Eli Lilly at 11 percent, United at mm-hmm. almost nine percent, Johnson and Johnson at seven percent. So it definitely fits inside the big three. Um, I was interesting. I was reading the Wall Street Journal, and it was talking about during presidential election years about sectors that usually perform well. Um, obviously, we know technology because that's been doing well for the past yeah home run months been home runs, but uh, c- consumer discretionary in healthcare, and so yep. uh, having exposure inside of that that sector um, seems to be a good thing. I actually was doing it in the uh, um, the two, 2024 uh, the journal the the, the the almanac, and it was I was reading yep. it was there as well. Um, so healthcare seems to be something that we should be looking at. Definitely, it should be on our watch list. We talked about the top two inside there, but a sector that we should look at to to perform well um, in these type of these type of environments. I mean, especially if you keep eating Kellogg's all day and all <laughs> night for for dinner, you're gonna get sick and have to go to the doctor. United Healthcare is definitely gonna benefit from that. So um, the, the yield could be a lot better. Like I said, the net margin thing, operating margin is eight point seven one percent um they haven't had a bad drawdown since 2009 so they're safe there i think they just need a lot more innovation some of these older companies that have been around forever we're entering a new age where the consumer is smarter more fickle the competitive edges are going away and i think we having to find ways to innovate so um get your tickets to invest fast in a new city come get your ten thousand dollar grant and then united healthcare start to innovate before you end up like cisco or somebody so we will be talking about Bitcoin shortly. Hit an all-time high today. Hit the like button. 72. And yes. share. We will be talking about crypto shortly. 
But um, first, there's a um, there's a concerning uh, situation recently Ooh. that um, a lot of people on Instagram have been posting. I saw Shaka Bars actually posted oh, it. My dog. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, there's, there's there's actually a video. Where in the world is Shaka? Mike, can we play the, let's cue the video. Ever wonder what a $1 million house looks like? Don't care. Jeff Bezos sold $8.5 billion in Amazon shares in the last two weeks. Amy Diamond sells $125 million of JP Morgan stock. And this is the first time he ever sold since 2006. Honestly, guys, something's cooking, especially with the stock market at all time highs. Mark Zuckerberg sold $428 million of Meta, AKA Facebook stock in just two months. And you have politicians dumping stocks like Apple, Microsoft, and Google I'm telling you guys something fishy is going on all right so um peace to shaka bars uh yes straight uh, the goddess yes um <laughs> and uh shout out to the guy that made the video I don't know his name but it's pretty entertaining he starts out with the real estate agent that was an interesting segue to talk about stocks but um yeah just taking attention getting for sure a uh, jeff bezos selling stocks mark zuckerberg selling stock long story short all these high executives are selling their stocks and mm -hmm. jamie diamond selling stocks so you know word on the street is that this is the sign that the stock market crash is coming maybe robert kiyosaki was right after all um <laughs> shout so, out to him so yeah, this this is what the people on social media are saying, and it's um picking up momentum. So, uh, what's the thoughts on a lot of the stocks being sold during this time? Um, at first I wasn't concerned, but then when the Vanguard CEO stepped down, and I know he had been there for some time, but that concerned me. Do I think the entire market is going to crash? No, the market is permanently rigged to stay up. Vanguard and BlackRock even have an exposure to the real estate market. Like, think about it like this. A stock market company began to invest in real estate and BlackRock, Larry Fink came and took over crypto to hedge. So if the market did go down, they would be safe on the public stock market. But when Zuckerberg got to selling shares and Bezos began selling shares at scale and the Vanguard CEO stepped down, I'm like, something is coming. I don't know what it is yet. I think it is definitely a hedge for them. I think the biggest concern may be what happens post presidential election cycle. They're going to keep everything up until the election. And then after that, the truth is going to come out. December could be bloody. That January could be bloody. Um, even with TikTok, the one thing that everyone in Congress can agree upon is to ban TikTok. But if TikTok becomes in vogue, it may put some pressure on Meta. Um, I think there is something coming that the powers to be and a 1% of the 1% know that we don't know yet, but I don't think you, uh, most of us should be selling our stocks for sure. Yeah. But I will put a lot tighter stops along the way amongst NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, Microsoft um, as a result. So something is coming. I don't know what yet, but, but keep your eyes tuned to this channel and blackout and we'll tell you what to do in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. This doesn't feel like 2021. Um, so when we, heard about CEO selling shares. It felt like there was a pandemic run up. And at the end of 2021, starting 2022, we started to hear, well, I guess the fourth quarter, we started to see more CEOs uh, taking profit, selling shares. And then 2022, we saw NASDAQ, we saw the market crash. Um, yep. I, you know, everything dropped down over 20%. I think NASDAQ got up to 32%. Um, but this, I mean, you think about the economic factors that were playing then that aren't the same now, right? Interest rates are coming down. Unemployment is down. Inflation is down. Uh, we are in the presidential cycle. I am not. I mean, if we're looking at a trend, it doesn't appear that something uh, as far as a pullback or a correction is upon us. But like you said, that 1% of the 1%, they know something. Um, yeah. And, so it's and Apple not doing well is a sign. And, yeah, Apple not doing well. It, I mean, that's a reversal, right? Because, it, I mean, we got so accustomed to when Apple performs, the market performs. And now, like we said yep. uh, last week, that when NVIDIA performs, the market performs. And so when we see NVIDIA pull back, uh, we saw, obviously, the market pull back. Uh, but it just feels different. 
uh, it just feels different from 2021 it was like there here are the warning signs here are the warning signs here are the warning signs oh here we go and yeah. january happens and then it's indicated for the whole year um so i'm not sure what it is i'm with you i don't know what it is um but if i'm looking at trends i don't think it's immediate i don't think it, it happens in 2024 that would no, be it probably happened in 2025. And once again, the bond market has been down since 2020 and no one's talking about it. It's like one of them dead bodies King Vaughn caught and is just in the basement rotting. Like for the, the bond market has barely moved. And then gold, of course, is moving. Bitcoin is moving. So there's elation there from the crypto side. But gold used to be a hedge against the market dropping. Gold is hitting all time highs. Um, now they're kind of changing the, ma the Magnificent Seven and replace Fang with Bang, Bitcoin, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. <sighs> Something is coming. I co can't put my finger on it. We have to factor in that Japan avoided a recession. The Nikkei is doing well, but the Chinese stock market is still not Recovering. doing the best. <laughs> yes. Recovering. Uh, how, how much weight do you do? Put on the inverted yield curve. I know that was one of those those factors. A ton, know, right? And I it's mean, still inverted. Should we ignore? Are we just to ignore it? it, it that's kind of like when like uh, uh dude get caught up cheating and be like, baby, it wasn't really nothing. Like, of course they're gonna say what they need to until election time. Then they're gonna come out with the truth. Um, inv inverted yield curve. And then I know we talked about debt to GDP ratio, and no everyone act like it didn't matter. I want to say it again. Every 110 days, we owe another trillion dollars. I'm not a damn economist, but if I owed a trillion dollars every 110 days, I would want to end it all. How do you work your way out? Like you got like your obligation is a trillion every hundred days. What, what like what are we talking about? And notice, even now. Zuckerberg went to the wedding in India, put on a drip, look good with him and his wife. No major CEOs are talking right now. It's getting scary. It's getting scary. Jensen looks happy. Um, CEO of AMD looks happy. Lulu looks happy, right? But everyone else, I think they are a little bit panicked. And if we're going to be honest, the gig economy that we've been in for the last 10 years, that's softening as well. I think, like I said, Dara's done a great job at Uber turning that business around. But like, I know they keep saying that the inflation is not going to be that bad and the job market is recovering it doesn't feel like i've had five people in the past week text me like hey i'm about to be evicted the job market isn't as great as everyone's saying and then if we and if we look at um the diversity and inclusion the numbers came out they only gave 23 million dollars to black startups last year so this year to probably be eight million Like we're in a real crisis, real time. Like this is why this show is so important. Um, check out the episode that you guys have tomorrow. Like that's why all those episodes are so important. Shout out to the queen that does venture capital. Amazing episode, like how she told her story to navigate, you know, that jungle. That's another area that we have to crack to be able to fund our own projects that we love with people that look like us. But there is a real crisis going on when like, if you look at a staple company like Macy's is not, done well since 2016 retail is damn near dead most fast food is dead kellogg's floundering without crypto i'll say it again i don't think the banks would be doing that well they don't want to talk about new york community bank falling apart jp's doing well shout out to y'all boosting ethereum up but most of the banks are not doing like if you look at bank of america they are at 35.17 off that low of 26 bucks but they've been in the range forever. Like their last high was in 2006. Moynihan's a great CEO, but the an entire sector of banking is floundering. Retail is floundering. Fast food is floundering. Education is worse than it has been the last 15 years. We've got to have the conversation. Is a traditional MBA worthless or dead or dying? Like major pillars of our society are going to the wayside. And everyone's like, no, it's, it's fine. We got seven stocks holding everything up. Yeah. Well, some retail, right? Because I mean, we'll talk about Costco later, but there are some sectors in retail that are performing. If you look at Costco, if you look at Target, if you look at Walmart, Walmart, right? It, the, the, these, if you look over the past three months, they've had a, a nice rebound. Over the last six months, they've had a nice rebound. So yeah. you're starting to you're starting to see some some areas, or I guess those would be the cream rising to the top, right? <laughs> like you, you're starting to see specific companies inside of a sector that are performing well so not no no 
All hope is not dead. Well, I'll say this. Um, I mean, the golden rule in, in, in life is buy low, sell high. So I mean, we're, at, we're at all time highs. Um, a presidential election is coming. It's going to be a very contentious election. So from just a common sense standpoint, if you're a CEO and you make billions of dollars, why would you not want to sell? And, and look Big at facts. You could always buy back. Mm -hmm. Buy the dip. Um, so, yeah, stocks will. It's not like they're going to just keep going up forever. Uh, stock markets over overinflated. Relative Big facts. To, relative to the economy. So, um, I mean, it's just common sense. If if I was in a situation where I had thirty billion dollars that I made from stocks, yeah, why not? Fuck about a dip. I'm a dip out. Sell. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so yeah. I mean, I think, but like I said, that's that's important for people to understand. Like, you know, um, I don't think it's so much of a conspiracy theory or anything like that. I think that it's just it's a common sense play. Um, they're seeing the global economy, they're seeing the U.S. economy, and they're seeing the stock market, mm -hmm. and they're saying, okay, this is probably a good time to exit stage left. Let's, at the very least, wait it out, see what can happen, and um, deploy our capital into other places, sit on the sideline, cash is always king, yeah. and um, you know we can always get back in later, because even, even if it continues to go up, it's going to come back. It's going to come down. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to come, come back down. down at some point, so it's like, alright, well, this is an opportunity to, to wait it out, so Take profit. When you see when you see people taking money out, that's because they think it's gonna go down. You don't take money out if you think it's gonna continue to go up. That's just common. Absolutely. It's common that's sense. Common. And then the GDP is only supposed to increase 2.4%, going back to that net margin thing. Um, while India is on fire. And I do want to say India, this is actually th this just, just a point on that. There was a, a great story in uh New York Times about, and this is interesting to me when, when you said India, I hadn't even thought of it, but when they looked at the options market globally the largest fire. the largest percent of option uh trades have come from india i think it's like s almost 70 percent of option trades mm -hmm. which is in, like in, I, I wouldn't even have thought of that which is crazy oh like america's like uh dead be dead like we give all of our money and best resources to other countries and we built up china then they teamed up against us because they don't believe in democracy and neither do we because we're technically a republic and now we're seeing at one time the Indian market stock market was flat, but because we've put so many jobs there, outsourced all the VAs and like we built up that middle class and luxury sector in India. Now they're going to start to overtake those trading markets as well. That's why you've seen Apple pushing the best potential growth for iOS is going to come from India. Like yeah. 10 or 15 years really depends on if they can penetrate that market and make a phone affordable enough for people there to use that at scale over right. Android. Yeah. It, it, it's becoming true. The new innovation is not a new product. It's a new territory. I, I, yep. I will say this. Um, so if you don't know, I was I was in uh, Capitol Hill last Thursday for All the right. State, of, State of the Union address. I want to start the conversation with this. This this is my conspiracy theory bag. And I can't say too much. Oh, I can't say too much, but I will say this. I was extremely confident that Donald Trump was going to become president prior to my visit to Washington. And I think a lot of CEOs, at least months ago, had priced in. They already The stock market had already priced in a, a Donald Trump victory. This is just my personal opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, I received some information that changed my mind. I'm not I'm really not, I'm not as confident. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Troy, come on. No, no. My mom's <laughs> got us up right now. I can't hear her. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Mama. Yes. She's like, I can't hear that. Yes, Richard. That's what he's talking about. I'm not saying I'm not saying that Biden is gonna win, but I, I did receive some information that I wasn't aware of. It's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tight race. Let's just say that. So I think like I said, this is just my personal opinion. I think that from a market standpoint, if you if you if now if you have uncertainty, markets don't like uncertainty. They like certainty. No, so yeah, yeah. You yeah. know Donald Trump is gonna win. Okay, at least we can price that in and we kind of know, okay, this is a, if you know Biden is gonna win, if you don't really know who's gonna win, that would that would add uncertainty to the market. Anytime there's the uncertainty market, yeah. in the market, then the mark the stock market drops. That's kind of like an easy way to understand things. 
And I think if Biden does win a second term, then that could potentially have even more uncertainty given his health issues, different things of that have nature. Cabinet issues. It, it cloudies the water a little bit. Cloudies the water right. a little bit. So that may that may be that may be part of the reason for selling as well, leading up to the election. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was an interesting trip to Capitol Hill. I definitely would like to thank uh, Representative Lauren Underwood for inviting me as her guest. And um, I got to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus. I got to meet with the head of the Democratic Committee. I got to, yeah, you know, had an introduction Sorry. to Nancy Pelosi and AOC and Representative Omar and Maxine Waters and a bunch of other people. For those that's asking why I did not meet with any Republicans, um, this is an interesting situation. So earn your leisure, we've been around for five years. We've had multiple politicians that have actually reached out to us. We've never reached out to a politician, but we, we accept invitations from anybody. We, um, in the course of five years, how many Republicans do you think has ever reached out to us? Settle. Zero. So I, I'm, I would love to, to speak to Republicans. I would love to interview Donald Trump. I would love to have a, a inside conversation with the Republican party. They just haven't reached mm -hmm. out. So if they reach out, then we'll take, we'll take it for sure. Um, but until then <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna entertain the conversations that, um, are on our plate. So for anybody that's wondering, but I'm still a registered independent. I don't support any political party, but I do take invitations for people that invite me different places. And yeah. the invitation came from the democratic party. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the answer for that. Cause I already know that that's gonna, um, you know, I already, you wearing I, a MAGA hat or Trump give the interview if that's his caveat? No, I can't wear the MAGA yeah. hat. Um, <laughs> but I will. I will, saw one. will be interested. Yeah, for sure. You definitely saw one. For sure. But so briefly, I just want to talk about the State of the Union because um, yes, it's, please. Uh, it ties into the stock market. Um, you know, it's one of these things that Washington is a very interesting place and it's very important. And, um, you know, meeting with uh, Representative Underwood. And she is part of she's on the chair of the uh, appropriations committee. So she was explaining the appropriations committee to me, you know, the, so in Congress, there's, there's multiple different committees. These committees are 20, 30 people. They're extremely powerful. And depending on what committee you're on, you have a tremendous influence. So the Ways and Means Committee is the committee that, that um, deals with taxation. They pretty much write the tax code. It's about 20, 30 people. So if you think about it, a country of 300 million people or so, 30 people really dictate taxes, right? But then mm -hmm. our committee is the appropriations committee. So that actually dictates where the tax money goes. So that's another like, you know, 20, 30 people committee. And I asked how much money they were responsible for deploying last year. I think it was like $2.3 trillion, trillion. So, um, she was telling me about, you know, healthcare and uh, farmland and homeland security and a variety of different, um, a variety of different aspects. Cybersecurity, very, very big as very far big. as the, the deployment of capital. So understanding um, the dynamics of Washington, I think, is extremely important to really understanding business because they go hand in hand. And... Yes. If you watch the speech, the whole speech was talking about different financial issues, whether it was homeland security, that's a financial issue, whether it was wars with Ukraine, the Ukraine, Russia situation, that's a financial issue. That's billions of dollars that he's actually asking Congress to for whether it's um, he talked about uh, affordable homes, giving a grant. I think it was like five hundred dollars, something like that, a thousand dollars to everybody to try to buy a home. That's obviously a, a financial issue. So many different things that student, loan. student loans, financial issues. Yeah. So everything that is actually being talked about on the political side, it all dates back to financial issues, money. And if Absolutely. you are involved in it as an investor or an entrepreneur, then you're able to actually obviously benefit from it. Right. So um, extremely enlightening um, day. As I said, I got to meet with some some people 
that were very um, helpful in helping me understand things a little bit further than my original understanding of things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it was something that was was definitely an eye opening experience. For yeah. sure. I, I think uh, let, let's pull back the layers a little bit because a lot of people may have watched it on TV, don't really have an understanding of it. You were inside those chambers. I think we've I've taken a tour inside there before. Never obviously never been to a state of the union address, which is very rare uh, moment in time. So to talk about the the atmosphere inside the room as the speech is happening, right? Like, because mostly I even have to explain it to my kids. Well, why are they clapping? Why are they not clapping? Why are they standing? Why are they not standing? Like, talk about those dynamics inside of that room. State of the Union is very similar to a hockey game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a lot more entertaining in person than it is on TV. I've watched State of the Union gotcha. for years, right? And, you know, who, you, know you watch it, you, you, you doze in and off. It's not really, it's not the most exciting thing in the world. But being there, the energy is crazy because you got hecklers. So people on the ground, they about to start fighting, actually. Like, you're not the, the MAGA people. <laughs> Versus the Democrats, they arguing with each other and each other's faces. Then you got random hecklers that get thrown out. Um, people booing the president, people cheering every everything, every word that he says, they cheering. So it's like um it's a very entertaining it's two and a half hours. Yeah. I honestly thought that I would probably be falling asleep after the first 30 minutes, but I actually stayed up. I was very alert for the whole thing because I, it was entertaining. It was very entertaining. They take your cell phone, so you can't you can't yeah, record no anything yeah, inside. Yeah. Um, it was it's a, it's one of these things that you don't have a full appreciation for until you're in it. And another thing, as far as the networking thing, um, never turn down an invitation. That's, That's a good lesson. Point. When we first got the invitation, we actually wasn't going to go because there was only one ticket and they couldn't get us two tickets. That would have been a tremendous mistake uh, because just me going opened up opportunities Opens for up the door. Exactly. Th this is a lesson, folks. So never, <laughs> never turn down an opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't a flip a coin thing. It was like, yo, do you want to go? Yeah, yeah, I'll go. But I wasn't sure. Yeah, well. go. go. And I, I think I texted you like 6.30 in the morning. I think I said I texted you like rep the set. <laughs> and he, I, it, it doesn't even need to be spoken. You did a great job. Go rep the set. Yeah. I want to ask you this, though. I don't know. Nobody asked you this. So like when you're in that chamber, right, you got to be mindful of what you're wearing, right? So if you were like a blue tie or a red, like you could be synonymous with one side or the other. Did you think you didn't wear a tie? Was that intentional? I didn't wear a tie. Um, you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Yeah. That's I a good point. Wear, I didn't wear a tie. Honestly, the reason why I didn't wear a tie is because I knew it was going to be a long day. We started at 10 o'clock in the morning, ended at 12 o'clock at night. And um, I get uncomfortable like with a tie for... 12 hours at a time. So mm. I knew from a comfortability standpoint, um, I I did not want to wear a tie because you know it was gonna hurt my neck. <laughs> but I also I also wanted to have some level of business casual um to it. To um like fat Joe, everybody does it in their own way. Fat Joe has sneakers on, so that was yeah. his way of kind of you know, I guess representing hip hop culture. And I just wanted to feel like, you know, I'm going to still be respectful. So I had a suit on. I had shoes on. But I want no tie mm -hmm. because um, we are still, you know, renegades in this situation. And I wanted to kind of, you know, rep the set, do that, <laughs> do that and be mindful of it. But I, I did. I, I wore blue, but it wasn't for the Democratic. Right, right, right. It was just that was just a Did straight, that go into your mind? It did not go into my mind. But when I saw Fat Joe's tie, it, it was. I saw a red tie, so <laughs> coming yeah, off yeah, the yeah. shoes, I was like, right, you wear red yeah, tie, yeah, synonymous yeah. with with the Republican Party." Yeah, so, yeah. But, but but I will tell you this: shout out to Fat Joe. He he's somebody that should be studied because absolutely. But there's a thing. There's a thing called. So I have a. Um, if you've been to Market Mondays, you Market Mondays World Tour. I did it in two cities. I think I did it in in Canada, and I did it in maybe Chicago, LA. Maybe? Maybe Chicago, maybe LA. Where I did a I did a seven part series on how to network. People think like when you look at us and we've been able to go to Davos and you know the State of the Union and the Vice President's House and the Grammys and the Super Bowl and the NBA All Star Game and, yeah. and a lot of times what I realized is that people just think it happens by luck. Um, 
But there's a reason why you see the same people. Like there's a reason why Fat Joe is every single way everywhere, and, and he's the only one, right? So there's it's not, it's actually a set formula, at least that I my set formula. I've actually taken time. I was gonna write an ebook. I put together seven principles on how to effectively network. Then I expanded it to ten. I put together like a ten commandments of sorts. Um, that I've learned from the time when I actually first started as a financial advisor 16 years ago to now, everything that I learned over the course of that 16 years, which is not, it's not, it's not random and it's not an accident. It's actually a scientific formula that if you follow, you, you have a, you probably have a very good chance of becoming a millionaire if you follow it. Mm -hmm. Um, what are three of the tips I got to ask for the audience? Three of the tips, three are, of the tips are, um, let me look at my notes. Do your research before know who you want to meet before you actually get to the point. Right. Mm, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a great point. point. Even, even when I was a financial advisor, um, how to position a referral. So a lot of times people go about the referral situation. They think, I'm going to ask Ian, Ian's my client, Ian, um, can you give me three people that you know? That's that's the lazy way for a referral. You should already know who you want to be introduced to. How do you yeah. do that? And in those days, it was going through LinkedIn. That's how I was taught. Like you go through somebody's LinkedIn page and then you see Ian is connected with the head of Coca-Cola North America, right? Now I can position the ask a little bit better. So I can mm -hmm. say, okay, hey, I see you follow um, John Smith, who's the CEO of, of Coca-Cola North America. Do you know? Him? And yeah, yeah, you know, it's my it's my um, kid's godfather. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, do you think that he would be uh, a beneficial for me to a beneficial person for me to reach out to? Yeah, yeah. I can ask. Okay. Um, so here's how I will follow up with that. So when you say, yeah, I can ask. That's not good enough because you're probably not going to ask, right? It's like life is going to happen. So I say, okay, um, do you mind um, reaching out to him? And then you say, yeah. You say, okay, well, if you reach out to him, this is this is how I will want. Well, I want you to say it. Yep, it happens all the time. Even for us, right? People introduce us. They be like, yeah, this is Rashad from Earn Your Leisure Podcast. And I'm like, I I would actually prefer if you say that we own a media company. Da 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 da. So even back then, it was like they would introduce me as somebody that sold life insurance. I knew that that would already be a turnoff to people. So I would say, can you introduce me as your financial advisor who helps you yeah. with life insurance, um, financial planning, budgeting, and college savings, right? Yeah. You got to position to ask correctly, but then I still, you still have to go a step further. So then I would say, okay, um, is it okay? When do you think you'll be able to give them a call? I'll call them on Monday. So I will put in my book to call you on Tuesday. Hey, or text yeah. you. Hey, just wanted to follow up. Did you get a chance to talk to, because I'm going to get the number. I'm going to get the number for you, but I don't want to call a referral until you spoke to him because then yeah. it's like a cold call. If you just randomly yeah. call somebody. So all of that warm is way you know, better. So you call, you call a person and you ask them if they call, if they didn't call yet, then you give them a, a friendly reminder. Right? So you encourage them. So then when they actually do call, now you're in a position to follow up. So that's just one example. That was like a five minute thing of how I'm doing research beforehand, positioning myself mm -hmm. to be put in a position to win. It's still no guarantee that you're going to make that person a client, but think about how much you more you're in a position mm -hmm. to win as opposed to just saying, Hey, Ian, who, who can I talk to? Right. That yeah. that's a random way. Like networking is not random. There's actually a set science to it. It's very strategic. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's extremely strategic. So that's one of them. It's a whole list. Um, and really quick, I asked both of you for all the contacts that you have, because you guys mastered this. How, how many messages are you sending a day to follow up people just to remain top of mind? Like, like take Megan, for example, a 16 Z. Like it's not coincidence that you do a bunch with them, but there's a, thousands of contacts how many are you going through like on a daily or weekly basis to like remain top of mind so for me it's not so much a, a set at this point it's not so much a set of like the top of mind thing i do use social media a lot to kind of stay in, involved in what some people have going on and i'll send yeah. them messages 
congratulations, so you just got a promotion or you just had a kid or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I, I'm personally staying engaged unless it's a campaign. Like if we know that we we have to, you know, get this person to do something, it's like, okay, now this is a top priority to make sure. Other than that, it's just, it's real organic. Yeah. Um, Like, yeah. you know, as far as that's concerned at this point. So yeah. I, I definitely organic, but I, I'm studying everybody. So if it's a guest, if it's somebody, um, I, I want to know your birthday. I know your kid's birthday. I know all that. I remember, like, we do interviews, and I'd be like, yo, happy birthday. Like, how you know? I'm like, yeah, I, I how you remember? You. Yeah, I've studied you before you even got here. But it's also, like, when yeah. we can add value, right? If there's something that we can add value to help you, then it's easy. That's just going to be a reach out. Hey, I got this person that I think you need to meet. This is great. I heard that you're doing this. Oh, they can help you. Um, and then sometimes it's just that if I haven't heard from somebody in a while, I always, I'll just go through my contacts. Just tap hey, how you doing? Know, How's everything going? You good? Yo, I love what you're doing. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations on everything. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations on everything you're doing. And, and it could be anything. Look, yo, I saw you. Yeah. Shout, shout out to, to um, you know, we got people in, in our neighborhood that are starting businesses and stuff. Yo, I know you. I saw that podcast you started. I've been watching it. Where are you been watching yeah. it? I watch everything, man. Keep going. Just don't stop. So when people know that you're paying attention, when they, you've taken out your time to acknowledge something that they've done, they appreciate it even more. And so that that's just become natural. So Social media helps with that because people always want to tell about what they're doing. And so just a, a, a quick congratulations. Uh, keep going. Don't stop. I uh, love what you're doing. It goes a long way. For sure. So I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but you know what I am doing, Ian? I was going to write a book. I was toying with the um, idea of writing an ebook. Okay. This. I still might because it's, it's, it's beneficial. And it, I think it's Absolutely. something. I think it's something that people can actually really like learn from but in the meantime i'm teaching a math talk class. to him just talk talk to him. Him. <laughs> keyword master class keyword oh. <laughs> tom petty <laughs> yeah zoom in yeah i'm putting my class wait, wait wait you got a math class going on uh this saturday 12 o'clock yeah eyl university i'll be teaching my 10-step mm -hmm. master class on how to network to become a millionaire yeah <laughs> it's a change and this life. is you know i'm listening to the story because this is not fiction this is all fact these are living mm. testimonies like i was the person i remember when i uh, you was like yo introduce like i want to know three people that we don't know together and it was like oh your principal let's target her Go ask her on Monday. Did you ask her on Monday? Well, these these all like these things these, these, really happen. And I'm the person that actually did those things. These are all trial and error. That's a fact. I had to fine tune. Like I said, it's taken 16 years, but um, this is in theory. This is actually real, real, real facts. Practice. So I'm going to mm. be doing an EYL University master class, <laughs> 10 step program on how to network to become a millionaire. Yeah, millionaire. This I love Saturday. it. There's no, there's no coincidence. What that. time Saturday? 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 12 p.m. Eastern. If you're an earner, sign up. I don't want them to see my eyes right now, yo. <laughs> join, join EYL. Okay. Uh, but once again, well thank played. You, thank you to thank you to Representative <laughs> Lauren Underwood. I, I really, I really, yes, do, yes, I really appreciate do. you and her whole staff. I really do appreciate that so much. I saw you met some of uh, uh, alumni too. Market Monday's alumni. Jamal Bowman was there. Jamal Bowman. Yeah, sure. shout, out shout out to Jamal. Shout out to Congressman Jamal Bowman. Um, and really quick, in a master class, will you, will you be able to show like a screenshot of an email or a text that you send so people can use it as a template? I think it'd be a great value add. Yeah, for sure. Um, can you remember that? Got gotcha. you. Tell me to do that. And I'll, I'll put together a slide. Yeah. That's a good. That's. I'm glad you said that though, Ian, because I used to. I did have a template. Uh, cool. Even you know what I used to have? I used to have letters too. Um, I used to have thank you letters. So. My referral process they help a lot. Crazy. I, I used to send I used to send letters to to referrals. It was a whole thing. So um yeah, man. That was that was uh it was like going to boot camp, man. You learn a lot during those times. Mm -hmm. I was there, man. Absolutely. I was there. That's a fact. Hit the like button. Yes, share. please. So let's okay. We're going into the prime time hour. Bitcoin last week it hit an all-time high when we was on air, I think sixty-eight thousand. Today mm -hmm. it cracked over seventy two thousand. Um, it's so seventy three five. Bitcoin's going crazy, mm -hmm. and, and also as a result of Bitcoin going crazy, of course the whole space is going crazy. But Coinbase, um, you know, for full disclosure, I've been an investor in Coinbase stock for a couple of years now, and um, yep. bad decision. Well, I actually brought it at, at a high, and um, I was down. Coinbase stock dropped drastically mm -hmm. 
and I was down at one point I was down 40% on my position. Um, them days is over and I, I'm, I'm positive now. <laughs> I think I'm positive like 10% now. So I, I'm, I'm back in the green for my Coinbase stock. Um, I still don't have any endorsement of Coinbase cause I got robbed on Coinbase. That's why I didn't invest in them. Um, but I, I brought the stock That's before, before yeah. that happened. But in any event, um, Coinbase stock is up as a result of Bitcoin reaching all time high. Bitcoin is up. Other cryptocurrencies is up. So we're going to talk about the whole space. Yeah. We're going to talk about the whole space, but let's start with Coinbase stock. We haven't talked about them in a while. Um, they are currently at what is it, around 270, 267. Yeah, around 270 mark ish. Yeah um their all time their 52 week high was 271 mm -hmm. so um okay coinbase a, a company that showed a, a lot of promise it debuted at 342 still hasn't gotten back to those numbers that price is too high yeah yeah it debuted at 342 mm -hmm. and then dropped all the way to 33 dollars legendary it dropped yeah. from 30 342 to 33 dollars yeah and um Kathy Wood was the one that had, she brought a lot of at, at a high, and then but now it's rebounded. It's, it's headed back it's up climbing. to three hundred. So, climbing. um, what, what's the deal with Coinbase stock? Um, let's go look at the so gross margins eighty five percent, net margin three point two four percent. Um, of course, the success of Coinbase heavily tied to Bitcoin and Ethereum, with uh, Bitcoin doing incredibly well. They shot up a a lot. Also, Michael Saylor's micro strategy shot up a lot. So, like, we're seeing Bitcoin drag up other companies that were not doing well before. I do still think they have some challenges they need to to fix um, if they want to be like that preeminent, the vanguard like player in the crypto space for those that may be like laggard investors. But um, they've had a hell of a run. They opened up at one seventy three this year, currently at two sixty seven fifteen. Been a great run. Brian's had a bunch of battles that he's overcome. Kudos to him. Still not one of my favorites. It's not in my top 50, but I'm glad you are back in a positive. My God, thank you. <laughs> um, but this is a way to invest. Like Coinbase, iBit, they are other ways to... Uh, GBTC is another way to invest um, through proxy into Bitcoin. Uh, and that GBTC went from 38.05 to 64. So if you want exposure and you don't want to pay 73,000, 72,000 a coin, you can get Coinbase, uh, MicroStrategy, or GBTC and um, to get exposure to the market that way. Should, should, I, should I sell my Coinbase at, now that I'm positive? Or should I ride it up? Should, can, I, can I still get some quick I, I, I will pro I'll probably lock in profit at like 1% just in case if it crashes, but, but I will let it ride. I'll yeah. let it I mean, ride. it's interesting when you look at the climb of, of Coinbase, it was at 342 when it debuted. And then uh, November of 21, it got back up to 342. So it, had, it did pull back after. But was, I remember I was talking about not investing in companies uh, after they've ipo for at least six months. And yeah, absolutely. So happened in the seventh month, they pulled all the way back down. But even on this ascension of Bitcoin up to seventy-two thousand, it hasn't been a meteoric rise for Coinbase. It's been a steady rise, right? And so, if you're looking it's at it's been a steady rise, it's at an all-time high. But Coinbase hasn't got nearly back to its all-time high. That looks a little concerning to me when we know how reliant this space is on this. Uh, uh, I mean, th th they've had two positive quarters. Yeah, yeah. but I, I wonder. No, I, I'll just say, I wonder if this, we always talk about ETFs when we're talking about individualized stocks and individualized equities. Is this, is Bitcoin the the premier place where we're talking about maybe the ETF route is probably best because of the ex less exposure? So you, you mentioned one, but uh, uh, BitB is another one. Is the yep. ETF route probably better for Bitcoin than doing like a brokerage like a, a Coinbase? Uh, Larry Fink and BlackRock so want me to say, yeah. Shout out to everybody who killed me when I said uh, the banks are going to come in and take over Bitcoin. $18.9 billion of Bitcoin under management. Shout out to Larry Fink. Yeah. So pr probably a safer investment. But it would be the same two tech, two index strategy for that. So if you want to do coin and GBTC and pair it with iBit or BitB or you pick the ones that you want to invest in. But it's the same strategy, and the index component is to prevent massive drawdowns if the stock or uh, underlying asset goes down 60, 70%. So, 
Yeah, but yeah, sure. I mean, they got 3% net margin. That, that's when people are like, hey, how do I know like fundamentals? What are they netting? If they're negative, horrible. But if they're between one to 9%, it's not a business I want to be in my top five. <laughs> um, so I, I think the math is really simple. I think it's common sense, like Shadi said earlier. And Bitcoin, I mean, um, Coinbase is the premier place in America to buy um, cryptocurrency. So it would make sense as cryptocurrency increases and, and more people yep. buy cryptocurrency that their strength and their valuation will go up. I mean, it's a direct correlation. So yeah, Apple should have bought Coinbase at that low too, being stupid. Yeah, 30 <laughs> stupid. Now. Instead stupid. of arguing with Epic Games and even at that $2 billion EU fight, like, it's like, bro. That's not even I don't believe the game's over until we're up by 40. Like, they need some exposure to crypto. When that stock went to 40, 50 bucks, they could have put a bid in and bought that. It's one of these things, right, where it's like, because um, I'm just I'm just doing the math right now, and um, Coinbase low of $33, which two years ago, it wasn't a long time ago, two years yeah. ago, and it's at, you know, what, 266 right now? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's a seven. 700 that's a 700 percent increase. It's yep. one of these things, right? Where you um it, yeah, how do you know when is a good time to buy it? Listen to Market Mondays. Yeah, for sure. That's important. Cause Hold. if you would have if you would have bought Coinbase then, I yeah. mean the stock I, alone. Yeah. Let alone an option or like that'd have been yeah. out of this world. Yeah, you're out of here. And for those in the comments saying that I didn't like Coinbase, I called NVIDIA, AMD, Bitcoin at 28,000, Bitcoin at 20. Come on now. Let's not do this. I'm in a good space. I love y'all. But Well, speaking about Bitcoin, it's at 72,000 now. So 72,500. Yeah. We have to talk about Bitcoin again. I know we talked about it last week, but let's talk I about it. I love it. Bitcoin. Keep buying Bitcoin. Dollar cost average. Same rules in video. Um, if you believe in it, um, still, I don't care what it is. Don't buy the high. Do not buy the high because if not, in two months, you're going to cry. Um, you got to wait for a pull. Back. Wait for it to pull. Crypto always pulls back. <laughs> that will, that's Absolutely. a guarantee. Crypto a violent 10 or 15. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Absolutely. violent. <laughs> yeah. So, so if it gets maybe to five or 59,000 or Sixty-five thousand. If this your first time, you can look there, but a pullback is going to happen for sure. The pullbacks probably won't be as violent as it gets bigger and bigger because more institutions own it, and th there's just more volume. So, like, it won't probably drop seventy-five percent like it used to. No, but no. crypto historically, if you follow crypto, you know one thing is for for certain: it always has pullbacks, drastic pullbacks. Yep. It has pullbacks. This has happened since the beginning of it. It's one of these things. It's like a hurricane hitting, you know, a region that always gets hit by hurricanes. It's not a matter of when. It's a matter. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. So, I know a lot of people are impatient, and you know, going to get almost, killed being impatient. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to wait for a pullback, especially if you're going to do a lump sum buying. If you're doing dollar cost averaging, then that's different. But for a lump sum buying, you have to wait for a pullback. But like I said, the good the good thing is that if history is any indicator of the future, it we it we will have a pullback, a pretty sizable. Absolutely. Do do we think it happens before the having event? So uh, the having event is scheduled uh, for April twentieth. They're trying to track the chain to see exactly when it happened. So April twentieth of twenty twenty four. That's this year, forty three days away. Do you think it runs and up until the having, and then we see the pullback. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, because I'm, I'm looking at the data now, the average monthly pullback of Bitcoin is like 28%. I think it'll run up until then, then it'll have a pullback, and then, of course, more excitement will be into it, more people will start to buy in. So, there's always going to be a, a steep pullback, but I think it'll run up until for sure the having event, yeah, and then that'll be, start again the four year cycle of Bitcoin, which we've talked about plenty of times. This is year four, which we yep. said is. If we look at the four year cycles of Bitcoin since its inception, that fourth year is usually yep. the most prominent one in terms of how far it climbs. And so we're in that now. Obviously, we've hit an all time high. It's, it's pretty accurate, right? It's hit mm -hmm. its all time high in the fourth year of the cycle, and then we'll start another one. So, yeah.
Good to know. And for everyone who says we haven't talked about crypto before or Bitcoin, I don't know what rock you just climbed from under, but it's not true. I love you. I appreciate you. Invest in the market. Then you won't have to make crazy comments on Twitter and the review videos that pay you $43. Text me. I'll give you the 50 bucks. <laughs> So shit is crazy, yo. The two dollar CPM play. So, so man, we talk about Bitcoin a lot, but what's some alt altcoins? What's five altcoins that people can invest in? And altcoin is an alternative coin, pretty much any cryptocurrency, not not, not Bitcoin, not named Bitcoin. So what what is some other alternative cryptocurrencies that people can put on their watch list? This first time, I want to turn it back to the audience and say, for my crypto experts in the audience, what do you think? Um, R5. I don't know. I'm not an altcoin expert, but let me see what my baby Doge doing. Let me see. <laughs> I think we start with Ethereum, right? Like number one. If we, if we, obviously, is Ethereum an alt? Well, it's anything not Bitcoin, right? And so, if, if we have to start with number one on the list, we can go Ethereum, and then we can talk about the rest, right? Because it's been number two with for however long it has. Most of the coins are built off of its network. Um, yeah, but you do have a few others that are, are trying to combat it, and I'll, I'll give a couple after you do. But well, I think Solana and XRP, of course, Solana, exactly. XRP, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Then we got Ada. XRP would probably be in that list as well. Solana, um, and even I don't know, we'll we'll see. But Binance Coin, I mean, these are in the top four. They've been there for the past five years, uh, and we, yeah. from the standpoint of why we said Coinbase is important, would be equally the reason why Binance Coin is important because Binance is the number one global platform that trades cryptocurrency including bitcoin and all these other yeah. altcoins um and it's transaction fees that come with trading uh so if they have the platform and they're number one i mean it's kind of a win-win business for them so i, I would push them in there and then i will that's like three i'll throw two wild solana you said which would be a four and i'll throw like maybe two wild cards um and i've talked about them before but uh avalanche uh and polygon Got gotcha. uh, to be Matic. I'll, I'll throw those two in there from a market cap standpoint and from a functionality standpoint. Avalanche is kind of like I wouldn't call it a rival, but they're trying to combat. Like sometimes we talk about when you go out too far, people can actually see the functionality and say, how do we improve? That's what Avalanche has kind of done with Ethereum. And then uh, Polygon is another one. Again, built on e Ethereum's platform, but it handles scalability and payments. Um, and so gotcha. I think though those that would be a nice basket of, of all coins. And of course, I mean, those are still up there. So I'll I'll, I'll let you put that yeah. on your list. Ian. Polka dot, yeah, polka dot, polka Trump. dots in there. I, I have polka dot here too. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Shout out JP Morgan coin cooking. <laughs> <laughs> they got some other ones that are cooking too. Uh, when you talk about just, but that's 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 the the crypto the main mania. It's like you see a, a coin go up a thousand percent right it's less than two cents and you're like oh i can put a hundred dollars in that and hopefully it'll grow sometimes that doesn't work like we we're just that's just gambling like you have no idea yeah like even when you read a white paper you have no idea you just like yeah. let's just throw this money away if we can and hopefully it makes money we'll see shout out to the shiba coin uh enthusiasts Shout so, to Shiba. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people made money. We can't knock it. People made money off of Shiba. No, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, people made money off of Doge. So let me ask you this. Um, one of the frequently asked questions amongst people is when to sell an investment. Um, this is yep. something that we just talked about Mark Zuckerberg and all these guys selling their stocks. So we talk about buying and holding, but at some point you have to sell. At some point. Whether it's you sell a home, you sell Bitcoin, you sell Apple stock, um, unless you just pass it down to generations and then generations and generations. Which would be ideal. Yeah. But all right. The number one question that people have all the time is we talk about when to buy, mm -hmm. look for pullbacks, dollar cost average, don't buy all time highs. Yeah. 20% drop, 50% drop. But when do you sell? Um, my rule of thumb is five or 10 years. If you want to do time-based exits, if you want to do percentage-based, once you get to 500%, you can look to take a uh, profit at that point. Or if you've gotten to 1,500%, like most, technolo most technology stocks over a 10-year period have a potential to hit 1,500%. You have some that are not there. It would be my same rule of thumb for crypto, 500%, 1,500%. 
or a five or 10 year period. That's the easiest way to know like when to sell or liquidate. For those who like, I don't want to hold that long. I don't know what to tell you. Like even this four year run in Bitcoin has been incredible. If you held NVIDIA for four or five years, the return, like going back to that four year cycle with the having event, like most great investors are looking to hold for seven years anyway. Um, so whole five years, 500%, 1500%, th that's when you should exit. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, that for stocks, um, again, that's like a pass down thing. So that, that's why we want to accumulate them, right? So like we create custodial accounts to pass them down. Um, but in options, it's, it's always percentage for me, especially on the positive side. Um, yeah, yeah. Once I, once, if it's anywhere between 50 to 100, depending on what position I'm in, I always like to, I say that all the time, like know where you're going to exit before you enter. So most times mm -hmm. I'm looking for 100% return, but sometimes I, and I've, I've sent that to to my brother G. I'm like, yo, I, I think this is going to be a 40% return right here. Um, and sometimes it exceeds it. So if I get to 100, I take my initial investment out and then mm -hmm. we let the rest go. Uh, on the downside, and this is when you got to be super disciplined, is like if you see uh, an investment that is starting to uh, go opposite and go red, 20%, 25 20, 25 percent yeah that threshold, my threshold it. um and it's like all right well let's revisit it it doesn't mean that it, the the contract was bad or the company was bad but the timing of when you got it might have been a little mm -hmm. bit off so i definitely in options I'm, I'm doing percentage but stocks yeah i'm 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 long term i'm five ten i'm however long i need to hold the stocks i'm gonna hold them yeah because yeah, i don't treat same it like it's just yeah, same with futures, right? It's the same same principle. I don't. I think yeah. people treat their brokerage account like their checking account, and that's like a very it's a dangerous it's a bad habit. It's a it's a dangerous habit to get into, and it's a bad habit to get into. So if you see money coming into the brokerage account and you're making money on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, it's like all right, well that money now I should just keep transferring it. Well, mm -hmm. you've made the money. It's your brokerage account. Maybe you should figure out the uh, another way to reinvest it in another proposition um or position not proposition but another position just my rule of thumb uh but i see a lot of people doing that they they treat the brokerage account like the the checking or savings account and now they give you a debit card too so like even some brokerages you can get a debit card that's attached to your yep. brokerage and you can use that which again kind of mistake <laughs> yeah kind of defeats the purpose of of investing um so i think you also well here's the thing to play the other side of the fence here. Yes. Um, most people probably not going to get 500% rate of return on their investment. If they listen to us, they will, for sure. Well, just on average, the stock market usually increases lower than that, right? Unless you hit a good stock, but then investing in individual stocks is extremely risky. So I think you get out when the, when the boat starts to sink. And that always doesn't correlate to time. When you start to see the ship going down, you have to get out because you can ride you can ride something all the way down to the basement. And I feel Absolutely. like um, that's the danger with individual stocks. That's why ETFs and index funds are a safer investment than an individual stock. Very rarely will a, a ETF that is a good ETF or a good index just spiral out of control and yeah, never ever, and never come back because they have the they have the they have the power to reposition their portfolio. So it's like QQQ, right? Like they have all these top technology companies, but let's say that all these top technology companies fall. And now the new crop of technology companies are open AI, um, Neuralink when they, when they debut SpaceX, all there's five new top companies in the next 15 years, they, they can change their portfolio. And now they'll include those companies as opposed to Apple, Microsoft, and Google, who might've been the, the leaders for the last 10 years. But when you're in, mm -hmm. when you're in with one company, let's say Apple, and um, you know, it's had a historic run and it goes up and it goes up and it goes up. But let's say hypothetically, I'm not saying that this will happen, but hypothetically, they just start missing. They start missing on everything. They start falling apart. Da, 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 da. If you if your theory is just to hold it for a long period of time, that's not going to work if the company is falling apart in front of your eyes. So you have to be a lot more hands on when you're dealing with individual stocks. Yeah, 20, 25 percent. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I hear what you're saying, but this, which is true. But it depends on on the entry of when you got into the position. Right. So like uh, Apple, if somebody invested in that and I don't know, let's say the 2007. How many times has it split? 
right? So like even a, a pullback of 20%, yes, that's drastic, but you've appreciated by over a thousand percent. Well, that's why it's not, it's not a set formula. I yeah, think it's, yeah. it's an eye test. Yeah. You know if IBM is is going down. <laughs> Shout out to IBM. You gotta know sometimes yeah, yeah, where yeah. like this is falling apart, it's over. Should or this is a short term yeah. pullback. Yeah. It's a yeah. buying opportunity for me to buy more. Yeah. Yes. So or, yeah. or, or just sectors change. You might have been invested in the airline industry, it was booming, and airlines is it's not it's not the, the same anymore. The wheel fall off here in Houston and crush a car. Yeah, yeah. The, the door fall off a plane. Everything doesn't stay. Yeah. Everything, all sectors change over the course of time as far as what what everybody now is on AI and chips. That's what everybody's on right now. Mm -hmm. 10 years from now, who knows? It might be something else. Um, yeah. So that's important to keep in mind, too. It's like, you know, you got to you got to be it's like a gardener. You got to you got to really pay attention to the crop. Um, and there's no set formula. That's what I think. I don't think there's really a set the, formula. If I can offer some pushback to cut it 20 and 25% is a set formula that uh, keep you safe. Yeah. yeah. But Percentage wise. That's your stop. But it's like, all right, during COVID, right? Every stock went down 20, 30. You would have sold your whole portfolio. And then got back in when, when I told him to. Yeah, then you would have made, you would have stopped that, your losses. But, and then and got back in. The problem is the problem with that. It's hard to buy at the bottoms. There's a reason why most people buy at the tops and not the bottoms. Because the average investor, it's a lack of discipline, yeah, that and just uh, confidence, yeah. a variety of different things. When something drops, you you think it's going, you don't know when it's going to stop. You think it's going to keep dropping. That's why most people buy at highs and not at lows. If that was the case, if everybody was that intelligent, every single person would buy a stock market lows. Yeah, but that's why we're we're creating intelligent investors, right? So if they have the stop loss at twenty percent, that yep. stock comes down twenty percent, it gets cut off the profits or whatever, it's is there. If they're watching it, like you said, being diligent is important. So you can actually you watch the ascension again. You can watch that trend going up, right? You're not buying at the high. You're buying it on that climb back up. It might hit the 20% where you sold that and say, all right, well, we're, we're trending again in an appreciation manner. So now I can reinvest. In fact, I might have even more capital than I did before to now reinvest. And so the diligent part is important, but the stop loss is important too. I think but there's also a we, we got to make sure that we, we encourage that. There's also a strategy of, of uh, dollar cost averaging on the downside. That's, yep. that's So <laughs> instead of selling, you can actually be buying more, which which actually lowers, depending on where you, yeah. where you, where you purchase, that's actually beneficial for your portfolio because it, it lowers mm -hmm. your your buying price. Yeah, we, I, with the diligence, I think that's the most important, right? Because people will say, I bought the dip, then I bought the dip, then it dipped again, and it dipped, and it dipped, and it dipped. That's you got to be super diligent when it comes to that. Buy the yeah. dip, buy the dip, and then it dips again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two hundred day moving average. We talked seventy two moving out. Like go back and yeah. watch every episode. <clears throat> the blue the blueprint is there, and also if everyone on Earth is talking about it, it's too late. Like when I called Nvidia on the show, like been in video a few years. No one thought it would be this darling. Like some things you like I test, you have to actually see. Like when I had my computer built, I told a story before, like when I would be in a trading room, I would see the move happen two seconds before everyone else because of the NVIDIA chip. Like then, like you said, things are run up. Now it's too hot. It's too late to get in. You got to buy low and sell high. If not, you are choosing to go broke. I deserve to be rich. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be wealthy. I deserve to be free. You have to believe that. And that's just yours. Yep. So, all right. Staying within the Bitcoin thing for one last thing. What's, what price would you advise people to get in IBIT? Um, great question. Let me look at this. Mm, I love it if it gets back down to 2583. Going back to being patient. Um, it debuted at 2794. It's on a hell of a run. It's at 41.46 right now. You cannot buy 10 to 15% from the high. So that's where I like it. If you, I'm going to be greedy, I'll wait to the yearly open of 27.94 and buy there. So those are the two prices that I like. So it may run away, but at some point we'll have a pullback. You may have to wait to after halving and you'll be good. And yeah. that's the Bitcoin. It's an ETF. ETF. It's an ETF. Yeah. yeah, we gave and I gave you the other one, uh Bit B, uh B I T B. Similar, mm -hmm. you could you could look at the chart, look at the ascension. So, another a Bitcoin so ETF. What's the benefit for? I already know it's going to be pushed back to say, if you don't own the coins, you don't own crypto. It's not you don't really you're not 
you're not owning Bitcoin if you invest in the um, ETF, but the ETF is also regulated. So you have protection in place as opposed to owning. Yeah. So what would be the um, advantages or disadvantages as far as owning crypto Bitcoin in an ETF as opposed to the regular way? Our number one thing is price because most people don't have $73,000 for one coin. But you can also so, buy you can buy fractional shares for Bitcoin though. So that's the good that's thing with, with crypto is that you could just you could put a hundred dollars in the Bitcoin and own zero zero point one whatever that equals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when the other part is that when you're buying it, especially and we know because we we've purchased Bitcoin before, the regulation that comes with that. I mean, it's it could be the wild wild west, right? If I use Binance. It can get tricky. Well, right? that's the number one thing. It's the security. Safety, security. Right? Like I, to I, me, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. You don't. You it's yeah. regulated. The stock market is regulated. You're not going to get robbed for for your for your money. Um, that would be the biggest thing as far as a, a security standpoint. That's that that would and it's what an institution. It's not just you know. I would think that that would be the number one yeah. and probably the only advantage. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You asked the question. The safety. <laughs> safety first. Yeah, I mean. We've seen too many instances, and even for, like in the early days when we were trying to figure this out, getting a USB and remember your catchphrase. And if you don't have every se all, all 17 words, you can't get into your wallet. And should I keep it on or should I have a cold wallet? It was, I mean, it's just a lot. to For the average person that has no idea, it's just too much of a barrier to get into. So play it safe. You know how to buy an ETF. It's very, very simple. Security and safety first. And take an hour a day to learn about Bitcoin and crypto. But that's the other part of it too. Like, or you're gonna be left behind, and then in a few years you're gonna be at four hundred thousand. You're gonna be like, why didn't I invest? It's the yeah. same story over and over again. So, I remember when it was sixteen, yeah. three. Yep. Uh, okay. What what should we keep a lookout on as far as the tipping point in this country, and how should we move to protect our finances? Should we have a major situation in our um lo looking at how many ceos continue to sell off um maybe we'll talk about it on blackout we have a border issue that we need to fix really bad which in four or five years could come to fruition and that could be another war that we have to face and fix um that can cause some, some damage in the economy um lack of american innovation is something i would keep my eye out on like nvidia is amazing um, but we need a few more companies that are pushing innovation for and giving better gains. And then also too, this debt crisis, like more people are living off credit cards than ever. Defaults are getting high. Average payment for a car, I think is seven ninety six Now those things have to be fixed. And I think the first political leader that comes in and actually poses a solution to those things, um, They'll sweep whoever they're running against. So those are the things I'm keeping my eyes out on for sure. So what about you guys? What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst scenario? Is it uh, is it conflict? Yeah, well, like this is the thing. So this is, you know, it, it's one of these things. I, I'll answer it, but it's we a saw, blackout answer. We saw Greece. We saw Greece a few years ago <laughs> where there was a run on the banks and then they um they stopped people from actually trying to let, let them get their money. What's the worst that what's the worst that can happen? They already have a limit on how much you can take out now. Well, yeah, I mean, but I mean, like they ain't even you you couldn't even take money out the bank. They they was like, no. We need it. No, if if, we, if it wasn't for crypto, I think we would have had two major banks either collapse or have to merge. San Francisco's in shambles. Part of LA is in shambles. I don't know if we'll ever see a commercial real estate market go back to the heights of 2010 and 11. I think it's finito. You at one point you may be able to go into a Simon Mall, buy some shoes, and go upstairs and go live. People are like, even when I'm traveling, I'm not seeing as much traffic unless I'm in New York City. Every other city, traffic is way lighter. Everything is down, and they're, they're acting like everything is fine. So. I think they'll prevent a run on the bank, and I think that's why they moved that definition of what a recession is. So, and no one's telling the truth. Got a big migrant issue. Even the um, some immigrants are not able to get an interest-only loan when people can't get mortgage forgiveness. How? Eric Adams, your days are numbered, my boy. How, Sway? 
Please tell me how that makes sense. And then, okay, then the border issue of infiltration from the cartels here. No one's talking about it. We save it for blackout, but Aztecs and the Zetas, how did this go? Every major county, every major city. It's a lot of shit going on that nobody wants to talk about. I, and Biden looked great at the State of the Union. He came out like loaded lux. He was not playing. <laughs> but there's a lot of issues. If I'm looking at a SWOT analysis, uh, let's do this. Put it in chat. Maybe we can do a poll. Are you confident in the American economy for your family for the next five years? Yes or no? It's a bad sign. If you contrast that with Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, confidence is through the roof. We have pockets. Miami is confident because of crypto. But if you look at Chicago, St. Louis, parts of New Jersey, LA, Tacoma, Portland, not Milwaukee, not that confident. Phoenix, not that confident. Shout out to the good so, folks in Tacoma. Big facts. Love Washington. <laughs> so what's so what's what's the backup plan for people? Uh, continue to invest, continue to be, build businesses and work hard every day. I think that's the part that people forget. Like we don't do this show every week just because like we're educating, but also leading by example. Um, I know people like, well, you need balance. I would rather the balance in the bank and the portfolio be really high than to get three or four days off and things not be okay. So should, should, should people be hoarding cash right now? Should they not be making big purchases? Should they stay away from buying real estate? Should they stay away? I, but buy real estate, but I said last year for the next four or five years, I don't think anybody should make any big purchases unless four you just five? like you said four or five years. I uh, let's look at leadership across the board. Yeah. Uh, Gigi, Gigi Ping, okay, but older. Uh, Tucker Carlson, great interview with Putin, but even in that interview, they said they strapped his arm down to not show the Parkinson's. Who Putin? Biden or um, yes, and Putin, okay. By Biden at best. So if we're looking at three of the big leaders for major continents, their elder and those who are running the countries are elderly as well. It's time for a succession plan. America does not have one on either side. RFK doesn't have a great chance of winning, but no one is confident in Biden for sure. And there's some Issues on the Democratic side. I don't see four or five potential super superstars out of the Democratic yeah. Party. Yeah, but even even with some of these succession plans, do we? I mean, some of these conflicts will stay in place, right? Just the U.S. Russia like there's a conflict in Ukraine and Russia. So, like, what is? But 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 that sh and if we're going to be very honest, Biden dropped the ball on that. But see, we can't talk about the real reason why. So on what Ukraine Russia? Yeah. My kid got a business there. Come on. Then we got to involve BlackRock. And this is like, this is Game of Thrones for real. And you know who cares none in this? BlackRock's going to end up with most of the land in Ukraine. They're going to end up with all the Bitcoin, all the fucking houses. They're going to be the greatest landlord uh, of history. And one time internationally, they may even buy Alibaba at one point. It's a rumor about that. They don't care about the people. Like one of the biggest... Stock investment companies of all time hedged with real estate. No one can do anything about it. Then it came into crypto. I tried to warn everybody. They called me conspiracy theorists and they didn't know. And you're pushing FUD. And here come Larry King. I mean, Larry Fink, like big meat in Bitcoin. Shout to dude. I pray you get out soon. Like, it's a, like, if you see the big companies start to hedge, it's some shit coming. They didn't want to be in crypto, and bit, but everyone talked it up so much. Well, if this thing is so important to the people, let me go take all of it. That's how they're doing publishing with the music business. Okay, great. This is the hottest artist on earth. They did like Michael Jackson. I want one of those and let me get one of those. Cool. Eminem got to talking crazy to Michael Jackson when I bought the masters. BlackRock's doing the same thing. We need to get along. And for those of you who don't get along, we need to get along. And not create conflict because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So Biden could have went to Putin and said, hey, 
yeah, they're kind of encroaching on your territory. You want it to be in NATO. We can't have that happen. But let me keep Ukraine over from some of your land. Now Putin's like, well, if you, okay, well, if you're not going to protect me, let's go to war with everybody. And then let's BRICS team up. And then BRICS is getting hotter than ever. There's no money in war unless you sell the arms. And even in, if all your clients kill each other, what good does it do? There's a there's a great piece that uh, I sent you, uh, and you should definitely take a look at. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me go. Review the film. So, <laughs> geopolitical <laughs> conversation. A bunch of risk. Ooh. Uh, yeah, good article. Good article. Got gotcha. you. Yes. Geopolitical <laughs> conversation. But but like you said, the polit the political landscape will tell you where the money is going to flow before yeah. hedge funds make a decision on this. And that's the thing. What I said with AMC and Doge, it was like, OK, great. Yeah, I know AMC was supposed to be the asset that the people took over to make him burst his portfolio. But look at how much even after that, Gabe went and did the deal with Michael to get the Hornets off of him. Great. He's going to get his good back regardless. And now every hedge fund on earth has taken the entire community that love crypto and made it a fan of major banks backing it. Damn, that's a great magic trick. Shadi, can you call them for, for the master class too? Like how you get people that hated you? We hate the banks and we want people. Now, I'm going ask now, is Bitcoin decentralized or no? The age old question. No. No way. Centralized. But when I said it, I get it. Sometimes y'all don't. It's my delivery, Troy. I'm learning. It's all in the delivery. I could have delivered it better, right? Yeah, you got to match the energy. Big facts. Oh. So it, it's just interesting times we live. But the politics set where the funds will go, and then from there, hedge funds begin to deploy capital in those areas. Us retail traders follow it. I just try and read so much and put dots together so I can kind of be ahead of the curve a, a little bit. But we're in a very interesting political landscape and everyone's afraid and no one wants to say anything. Like right now, can you name me four Democrats that have a chance of winning in a landslide in the next four years in any state? What, the, the national election? No. But not, not, or, I can't, or local. I can't, I can't no. name four Republicans either. Both of, both things are true. I can't name one Republican outside of Donald Trump. I can name one. Who? Candace Owens. She has. I see her. Oh. I, see her I, I see her play. She doing the same bullshit. Patrick Bet she's David using doing. The culture. She's using the culture as a springboard. I see Joe Biden interviewed her. I saw a fresh and fit with her. Um, she's using the culture. As she's a heating up, y'all. But she has no chance. She has no chance. No chance. You don't think you don't think she can at least be city council. Oh, Jason Lee's gonna be city council. Shout out to Jason Lee. Shout out to Jason. But I mean, <laughs> who's our base? Who's our base? Like, in your opinion, who's our base? Maga boys. Kanye. She's a black woman. Let's not forget she's a black woman. Yeah. Right. So who's our base? Who's really our base? <laughs> Let's not forget that part of it. I mean, she can't her run from that. You know what I'm saying? She can't run it's all that. good till they really got to vote for you. She can't run from that. That's like saying Charleston White is going to be a Republican candidate. <laughs> I'm not. I'm saying I'm not saying for national, but Charleston may win something in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, hey, I, yeah, I pulled that. I, 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 I I only, if if you build an audience up that loves you, which you guys have done, Ernie Leisure, I've done with Red Panda cult following. I see what Candace Owens is doing. I see what Patrick Bet David is doing. I see the delay in the what The Rock is doing. I see what Mr. Beast is doing. If you build up the audience, the shellacking is really easy if you don't have no great candidates. Well, I would have. I would probably say that The Rock and Mr. Beast would be Democratic candidates. I would. I would. Yes. Mr. Beast Democratic for sure. They may swing The Rock the other way. Uh, so, I don't know. Republican The Rock. I don't know. I don't know. You smell what The Rock is cooking. For real, brony, you jabroni, jabroni. <laughs> hey, people's elbow, hey. people's hand, people's eyebrow. Yep. We'll be Until here. then, get get that Terramano tequila. I'll say this though, because I I, I I spoke about this when I was in Washington with um some um politicians. More and more non traditional candidates will be winning high profile elections. Donald Trump, um, Rashad Bilal. I see your run coming too. 
Governor. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Governor. But uh, but yeah. So the, the Rock. I definitely. I definitely can see Mark. <laughs> Mark, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Uh, people along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, T Swifty in a, in a decade. Oh yeah, easy. You don't, you don't, you don't think the Republican Party didn't reach out to her and say, "Hey, shh." Well, she, she su backed the Democrats. Yeah, she supported she, Joe Biden. She supported Joe Biden last election, they last time. They they, 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 they waiting to see who she's gonna support this time. They thought she was gonna uh, endorse him during the Super Bowl. That was a Republican. He thing. needed it. They should have paid more. <laughs> that <laughs> political pact. Hey man, I, I'm the only one on record that said this is still a fifty fifty. Between you, you did. Oh, you changed today. Today you changed. Yeah, you, you changed. Yeah, you have the chance. You changed. Ian, you, you yeah. staying on that side? But that was based on that was. Oh, based what's, on don't do me like that. That's because I got the red background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a trumper. Come on, man. Come on. I get enough hate for the fly yourself out. You I gonna put me as a trumper? The background. I know the color. Oh of the background. boy, <laughs> Jesus I mean, Christ! Trump, Trump's still he's still in the lead. Let's not act like he's not in the lead. I don't know. No, we know he's in the lead. He's a national. He's winning national polls. He's in the lead. I told you. I, I gotta see. BlackRock and Vanguard, whoever they donate to the most, that's who I'm going to say is going both. To They're going to donate to both, a, but but they're going to have a one's going to get more capital. More, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, true. yeah, no, not I'm not a Trump supporter, <laughs> but I would like for him to come on the show. For sure, I do. That would be yeah. um very important conversation to have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nasdaq. Um, how do you master trading that? Um, practice every day. Uh, listen, I, I know you guys want a, a deep, complex ass answer. The way you master everything is by doing it every day. Write down every mistake that you have and every loss. Then when you win, uh, write down what, what caused you to win. Follow the same targets all the time. We don't need to answer the same questions about trader. 300 practice trades. If you do 500 sessions in a row, you go back, look at the data for the last 600 days to think or swim or TD Ameritrade yeah. trade or trader Vade or trading view, you'll be good. But mastery is hard. I know everybody loves Kobe and death, but they hated him while he was living. You have to go practice every single day. That's how you master NASDAQ. What's your, um, okay. Well, speaking of NASDAQ. What's the end of the year price predictions for the s &P? And I'm not trying to be flipping, but Rashad, if I ask you, like, how do, how do you master media? And then you do one interview a week. You're not going to master me. Like, you got to come up with titles and talking points, questions, interesting angles, especially for persons on a press run. Like, I don't. But this is the thing that's happening in the country. People don't want to work every day. Yeah, got to work on a craft every that's day. Fair. Consistency is at an all time low. And Big original, facts. originality is also at an all-time low. Right. Um, any price predictions for the S&P and NASDAQ for the end of the year? Where are we going? Yeah. Um, best case scenario, uh, 20,197. NASDAQ? Yeah. Wow. Best case scenario. Okay. Um, save, you said, oh, what did you say? 20,000? 20,197. Yeah. And then, um, hold on, let me zoom in here. And a conservative target would be 19,318.03. 19,318.03 conservative target. So there's plenty of growth still. Absolutely. There's still, there's still a run. What about the SP? Um, let me look real quick. It's sitting at uh, 51. 17. Yeah, I got a, I got a like 53, 45. End of year. If Biden has any chance to win, the SP got to be up. So 53, 45, 47. So you got That's the bullish case. You, you're, you're with the Bulls. Absolutely. Red background. Judd Bushler. <laughs> 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 For sure. You, you cannot have a bear. Look, George Bush taught you that. You cannot have a bear market and win. Boy, you going home. That. There's, since 1963, there's never been a bear market for an incoming president that's running for president. It hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. It's impulsive, but you oh, better hit every button. You better call the Fed chair. You better cut rates back down to two percent. Pull every trick out. Cool. Go go back on Breakfast Club. He better eat some chicken wings on Breakfast Club. Uh, you better go to Slutty Vegan when you go to eat. Boy, you got to pull out all the tricks. Well, at, at what point? Because uh, Fed Chairman Powell has been talking about this two percent, this two percent um, rate that he wants to get to. 
when do you when do you think that happens? Twenty. I mean, it won't happen this year, but is it twenty five? Is it twenty six? When when do you think it probably it probably needed twenty five because if the market drops and like the real job market numbers are not great, they're going to need to cut rates. I think they need to maybe hold it at two percent, maybe for four or five years to give the economy a chance to run up. Yeah. So this is yeah. all in the benefit of, of the investor, especially if I'm a beginning investor. This this is all those signs, right? Like if we we're, we're gonna make sure that the economy stays propped up. Uh, if we see a fall, we have the uh, the ability to cut rates to make sure that it stays propped. These are all things that point in the benefit of a bull case. So if I'm an investor, good time. Yeah. What are, what, are, what are three things that you think um, Joe Biden has gotten wrong and, and and could potentially hurt his chances of being reelected? Um, I don't think he handled the Ukraine situation properly i know it's not being talked about but he hasn't had like a weapons of mass destruction moment but this is comparable to um i don't know if most of the promises that he lived up to he kept and it was over with for me when he said if you don't vote for me if you're not black that was before last election uh, scarlet letter like slavery is a choice i'll say this for me. i'll say this he um the israel gaza situation horrible management yeah top of the line Thirty thousand people um killed 40 percent, i think children no no justification for that at all and mm -hmm. he greenlit he greenlit it so that's that's on that's under his um his watch even i mean you know it's good that he's offering aid and they're dropping food and he's gonna have the cruise ship uh, yeah. on the on the coast to, but i mean you drop in Food, but then you dropping bombs at the same time. So at the same time, I, and really quick, even here the, the micro situation, he dropped the ball on too. The who? Oh my! I was a situation. I was gonna put that because you didn't the say it. situation. The immigration, his immigration, the immigration. That I think he dropped the ball. Obviously, that that Gaza situation is gonna haunt him for years. Um, I don't think that they did a good enough job as far as marketing, like the student loan situation. He, he gave, I think he gave hundreds of millions of dollars in student loan, more than any president ever. Um, but it wasn't marketed correctly. He should have sent letters with when it wasn't enough. Uh, yeah, he should have did that. He should have said that was what Trump would have done to to really like you know drive the point that he did it and the Biden student for loan forgiveness program. I think they just wiped it out and just did it like that way. So the marketing, I think marketing could have been um, better for sure and i also think they made a mistake by not promoting kamala harris earlier on mm -hmm. they should have used her early because i think that she could be beneficial i think she still can be beneficial but i think that she could have been even more beneficial if she was highlighted in an earlier time frame yeah yeah i mean the, i know some people are gonna to you know, have feedback about the pseudo loan thing. Obviously, Congress has a large uh, part to play in that and approving it. But sometimes you got to use an executive order. Um, and you could have. And he has. He has. Um, but again, it's just, it's like scattered. Well, like, I, I said he's, I, the, he's forgiven more student loan. He has. And that's what I'm saying. He has. President in American history. This is true. That's a fact, right? I still don't know one person, though. That's big good. facts and if, if you would have handled the issue with China myself and the issue with ukraine you wouldn't need to did all the student loan forgiveness i, I, I just would have been great i mean and i work and i still talk to a lot of my colleagues and obviously we travel all the time i just haven't i haven't met a person that's benefited from it here's the, yet. Question, here's the question that people and when and if it happens and hopefully it happens for me I, I would be the first to say like here's the letter it happened but here's the question people have asked well, why haven't you paid your student loans on because I've met every qualification to be uh, forgiven, right? So I'm part of the public loan uh, forgive service loan forgiveness, right? So if you work in public service for over 10 years, you have 120 qualified payments, you are qualified for being forgiven. I did that, right? I worked in education for over 14 years. I made over 120 payments. The only thing that happens, they put that stipulation in that you have to be continuing inside of that profession. So the day I stopped teaching for a school district, Technically, I don't qualify anymore, but they've changed that. So I have to, I had to apply again. And so I'm waiting. It's not a money issue. It's a principal issue. I did everything that was qualified. I was in public service. They're going to girl step that shit for 15 years. <laughs> but you're still paying interest on it. 
Um, no, so during the pandemic, remember they stopped all payments. So I just started repaying again um, to to my principal. So like they, you had the opportunity during the pandemic to continue to pay. And so all those payments that I did, even though people were froze, those were principal payments. So now I'm back on the but, regular thing. And I just want to say one thing for the record, because I was talking to Styles P about this. Shout out to Styles and happy birthday Shout to Styles. his wife, Ajua. Me, Styles P, and my son was having a conversation, a very heated conversation. About Shout out to my son. This Gaza situation just so happened to happen in, in Biden's uh, administration, and everybody knows how he handled it. Donald Trump would have been worse. He would have, he would have actually, oh, yeah. he would have, he would have, whatever he, Biden, okay, Donald Trump would have okay times too. 10. <laughs> yeah. 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 He'd have been over there with it. He just didn't have the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. For the record. It was dangerous dude. It was dangerous dude. For the record. So I, like I said, I'm I'm a registered independent, but I just wanted I'm I'm thoroughly disappointed with how Biden handled the situation, but I have zero confidence that Donald Trump would have handled the situation any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. That's fair. For the record, that's fair. Put that on the record. Fent F fentanyl, that being flooding our country, like it's a lot on this jacket. It's a lot. Market at all time high. Yeah, thank God for the Fed keeping interest rates low. It's, it's, it's not, they, so what they're saying, we got we we could probably get some people from the Treasury on to talk about this. But what they told me, stock market all time high, um, unemployment low, low. Um, inflation down, inflation's down, um, more student loan forgiven than any president in American history, mm -hmm. um, more black judges appointed than any president in American history. That's fine. Um, first black Supreme Court justice. Yep. Uh, they 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 got a list, man. It's a long laundry list of things that they Yo. that they that they told me about. That's a good resume. But people feel poorer than ever. It's just not put together properly for it's us not, to really I celebrate. Don't think it's that. impacting the average American. It's the not. average American is not being is not feeling anything. The average American is not is even feeling more of the things you just said. Yeah, I think the market they're not feeling that. But I'm saying the market, they can the that. stock market, but that's still they can the average person out in the stock market. Yeah. Not according to statistics. Shout out to all the people that open brokerage accounts. For sure. For sure. But you still, even in your stock market gains, you see it, you're comfortable with it. Yeah. But you're not going unless you're selling your stock, it doesn't directly impact your life. You need a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to not be considered lower middle class in LA. That's it. You had a whole city collapse. Throw it more. The average per the uh, average person can't come up with one fifty, but a whole sit like Joe Rogan left and went to Austin and collapsed a whole city, and there's no plan to fix it. Chicago pension fund. I keep talking about the money disappeared. Nobody's saying anything. Social security is running out. Entitlements are running out. Obesity is up. Then you got, like you said, then you got Gaza, China. You didn't handle the conflict with with uh, Putin, right? Shug Putin, right? You're not handling the conflict in Mexico correctly. A thousand illegal immigrants are coming in per day. And the cartels are taking over the country and nobody's saying nothing. Griselda Blanco rolling over in her grave for this opportunity. For what, for what hell is going to ask that? This guy's crazy. <laughs> This guy's crazy. Okay. It's crazy times we live in. Crazy times we living in. It's gonna be an interesting election. <laughs> shoddy has been a real one. <laughs> we, we 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 extend the invite to, to any Republican leadership that wants to come on the program and talk about it. I know we can get Democratic leadership to come on a program and talk about it because yeah. I think it's important. I think it's important for us to ask the hard questions. RFK was, I think, a, a good interview because. We asked, we asked questions that needed to be asked yep. and um, let the people decide from there. But uh, Governor yeah. Abbott, come on. Donald Trump, come on. I'm so mad when you do that Putin interview. Tim, Tim Man, Scott's on your line. Yeah. Tim Scott's on, on the line. Well, the problem with the I'm Republicans, <laughs> the, the problem with the Republicans is that they just ignore they they ignore the black vote. The Democrats take the black vote for granted. 
Yeah, because we're whores for the Democrats. That's why. And the Republicans ignore the black vote. Yeah. If the Republicans had some level of intelligence, they would actually be doing outreach, or they would actually. There's no reason why a Republican. Look, I think we have a pretty. But but problem. but but if the if the Democrats know that they can call us at twelve thirty at night and say come over, is there a reason to reach out? Well, the thing about it is this: if 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 Ernie Alicia has not been reached out to, that's a problem. It's a problem. It, we have a very influential platform across all all genres, but especially when it comes to business, financial literacy, investing. So yeah. if one or two reasons you haven't reached out, you're not aware, you're not aware of it, that's a problem because a that you, we're not in your algorithm and you don't you're not in tune. That that's a, that's a problem. Another situation, a scenario would be you are aware, but you just don't care. You don't take it serious enough. You, you don't even care about the audience. You don't care about our audience enough to even try to um, have a message. That's a problem, too. Either way, no matter how you slice it, it's a problem. So there has to be some call out on the Republican side because they are getting a lot of support from black people, Donald Trump, at least. Um, and it's more so anti Biden, but also pro pro trump but it's pro um it's pro republican principles as well people are saying they want lower taxes they you know different feels about abortion so i just feel like if if our community is going to lend support to you this election it's disrespectful if you have no outreach that's 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 um mm -hmm. that's just saying screw it you're going you have no other option that's what donald trump said before man he was like you got you got nothing else to lose man romney said that too it's like you don't even have to try to court somebody it's just like what you're dealing with is so bad that wasn't that was if the, you, that was if you're giving that, up that was the secret tape free, taking like, the the remember they had they had uh mitt romney on on the hot mic and he yep. was like i know i'm not getting that percentage of, i know i'm not getting it i mean why would i even try but that's intelligent though but what i'm saying is that this time they actually are going to get it they have a chance to get it so they have a chance to get they have they have a chance to yeah. get it. Are they are they gonna get it? They have a chance to get it. I, mean, I agree with Mitt Romney. If I don't have no chance of getting a vote, I, I you no need to go after it. But now, if you actually have a chance, yeah, you're doing yourself a disservice by not voting. But hey, that's enough political. What do you know? I don't want to. What do you know? I don't want to <laughs> turn into a politician yet. <laughs> yet, um, but yeah, uh, four more years. You you know. It's, it's something to think about. Something to think about for all you politicians. I know that there are politicians that watch this show. When they started chanting yes. for one more years, what did you do? I didn't do anything. You sat there like you got the crowd going? I'm just an observant person. I'm just observing. I'm 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 four years. He he looked good up there. He looked like Iron Solomon back in the day. They gave him a shot. They gave him a shot. Something. Yeah, yeah, he had a bunch of B twelve that night. That boy looked twelve. He had the IV drip. The yeah, IV for drip. real. He was Spunky that now I said, boy, you ready came to battle. Okay, said, sleep, rabbit, sleep, eight mile. Sleepy Joe was awake that, that night, man. He took the IV, he took the IV drip. Yeah, he was ready. Took some R. Kelly vibes. He fighting for his life. Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> Come on, man. Ah, entertaining. Just be entertaining. Robert. 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 <laughs> Shout out if a grown man out. crow like that on TV, you know you going to jail. Nah, Gail, Gail was wild for that. Gail, legend, yo, Robert, Robert, Robert. Market Mondays, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Torres was even wilder. He said, "Do you like teenage girls?" This fool said, "What age you talking about, boy? Go, <laughs> boy, go do thirty years. Let them take your catalog. The, the fine, the fine teenage. <laughs> oh, blackout, oh, blackout. We gotta talk about. We gotta talk about the reversal on that. There's a lot of women that's dating younger men, and um, don't say stirring the pot." <laughs> <laughs> shout to Jalen. Shout to Jalen. Yeah, yeah, on three. Show. On three. No. Oh. Maybe that that's a blackout topic. Okay, when they look, 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 look. Hey. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen. Hey, after like uh Mackenzie Bezos' old wife, Drea may be the third best investor, yo. <laughs> we don't we don't see it happen. It's okay when they yeah. oh well, the last thing I found out some information about Nancy Pelosi too. So her hus her husband is actually a yeah. legendary trader. Um, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, investor, yeah. I, I think that um, sometimes people, um, they kind of, 
It's not necessarily her. Oh no, no, it's a husband. It's a husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a husband, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you see these trades, shout out to him, man. I hope he, he, hopefully he's in good health. I know he had that attack a couple of years ago. That was like five years ago, yeah. four years ago. Yeah, but it could have been like damage, like permanent damage. That was crazy. No, like, not the way them trades looking. He in tip top shape. Good. He doing good. Yeah, yeah, he doing great. Shout out to him. Yeah, but but that's generational wealth. I always said it. Uh, Medici quote: "Money to get power, power to protect the money." They are the embodiment of that. Baby, what, what y'all talk about in the meetings? So we, we, you know, twenty-six. Boy, report them trades. So blackout. We gotta talk about. Um, we gotta talk about Drea. <laughs> we got a friend of the show, man. We gotta talk <laughs> yeah, about right, Haiti. Drea. We gotta talk about Haiti on blackout. Oh, I got a lot. Yeah, yeah, we gotta yeah, talk about yeah, Haiti. Yeah. They got a full fledged. T- took over who they tar take over by, the, yeah. by gangs though not by not even by like army like the gangs they shut down the airport it's crazy i, I haven't seen yeah. nothing yet prayers for everybody in haiti man that's an interesting story that actually we gotta we gotta talk about that on blackout yeah, we gotta yeah. talk about that's one yeah. of those very unspoken story he definitely yeah. that's a cannibal game make sure y'all, y'all tap in uh wednesday at 10 wednesday at 10 y'all make sure y'all tap in blackout go download it go watch it if you missed any yes. episodes go re-watch it uh and listen to it on your way to work shout, shout out to tanya she listened to it on at work uh she always sends us a text shout out to tanya. Yeah, yeah, yeah and put what topics you guys want us to talk about as well if you got any questions for us that's a fact uh dm us or we'll put them in the comments tonight so unfiltered uncut Ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. Invented into the Invest Fest grant. Please. Sweepstakes for a chance to win $10,000. Ian has upped the ante. He's matching off yes. $5,000. So $10,000. And um, let us know where Invest Fest should be this Wait, year. My, Miami, is that you on the line? LA? That's yeah, you? you, never, you never, Miami would be crazy. <laughs> South Beach. <laughs> Cedric, <laughs> Terrence, Jay, go get the go get the go. We're going to be like, uh, <laughs> No, no, right now, south. not I'm, one, cannot pre- not cannot two, present at night, not three, three in the morning, boy. not four. <laughs> going no Kiki in the morning session, Kiki on the river, <laughs> Kiki on the river vibes, <laughs> red panda booby trap all weekend. Look, oh, Let's the go. booby trap after party. Booby trap has been active. Yeah, shout out to all our arenas and booby trap. Sprinkle me. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> Episode tomorrow, <laughs> master class, EY University on Saturday. That's a fact. Make sure y'all there. It's been Stock real. Call Wednesday. Yeah, reach out to your people, please. Even when they look like they're doing well, reach out to them. Stock Stock Club call on Wednesday at what time? Yes, uh, nine p.m. and then blackout right after. Let's oh, do it. Back to back, Bob. Let's do it. Yeah, back to back. Wednesday play. It's been real, ladies yes. and gentlemen. <laughs>